Welcome to Southern Conference football on CSS. The Western Carolina Catamounts against the Georgia Southern Eagles from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. I'm Mark Bryant, very proud to be with you on a day with intermittent showers and more rain in the forecast, but I can tell you it's always a nice day when you're working with Tracy Ham, a name familiar to all the folks in the Southern Conference. Tracy, glad to have you here. Uh, good to be with you again. And you've got a really intriguing matchup. Some good strength. job today of taking care of the football because if he doesn't it'll feed right into what Georgia Southern strength is and that's their defense. The number one scoring defense in the conference, in the conference only giving up 12 points a game. Yeah Justin Clark's going to have his eyes on number 13 A.J. Bryant for sure. And A.J. Bryant is one of the reasons why Georgia Southern has the number one scoring defense in the conference. He just make big play after big play. Now when the Eagles are trying to move the ball down the field which they do a lot in their wins they score 40 or more points. Uh, they are going to be looking for a big name on the Western Carolina side, Rico Reese. Rico Reese has been uh, everything for the Western Carolina defense. He has made big play, made a big play in the front of the game with the interception late in the game, and he has done a fabulous job of anchoring the number three scoring defense in the conference. And one of the big numbers, he is his eyes is number six. Austin, Jermaine Austin has done a tremendous job for Georgia Southern. He's been the, the staple of the offense. He's working on his, he just finished his 27th career rushing 100 yard game. So he's been doing a fabulous job for the Eagles. So we'll be looking at Austin and all the Eagles and Catamounts today. This should be a good one. You're watching Southern Conference College Football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. The Eagles and Catamounts have taken the field at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. SoCon action. From the home of the Eagles, I'm Mark Bryant, Tracy Hamm in the booth with me, and uh, this should be a good game, a stepping stone in Southern Conference play because no one can handle another loss. No, certainly not, Mark. This game here is critical for both ball clubs. Two losses in the Southern Conference will certainly put you out the race. There's Western Carolina coach Kent Briggs. He's in his fourth year. Losing record overall, 16 and 22, 9 and 14 in conference. He's a Western Carolina alum and was an assistant for Western for a great many years. Also did assistant work on the staff of NC State and defensive coordinator at UConn for finding his way back into the head coaching spot. For Georgia Southern, Mike Seawalk in his fourth year overall, 30 and 12, 20 and 6 in Southern Conference play. He has two Southern Conference titles to his credit and is undefeated against Western Carolina. Just a good game for Georgia Southern to be in in Western Carolina. If Western Carolina want to get up in the upper echelon, they have to continue to beat these type of teams that knocked off Furman earlier. Now they get an opportunity to come into Georgia Southern House and beat them as well, Mark. Here's your series history. Western Carolina has never won in Statesboro, and Georgia Southern has the 13-2 advantage. This is the 16th meeting. So a rather lopsided background, and Western Carolina would like to do something to reverse that. The last time they won in this series was back in 1994. The other win was in 1941. 78 degrees, cloudy, very humid, steamy out here, 98% humidity, and uh, chance for more showers later. This is a muddy track today. You see deep for Georgia Southern, number two, Lewis Barr, and number 85, Teddy Kraft. And I know from our game a couple weeks ago, Tracy, you liked what you saw out of Teddy Kraft. Yeah, certainly Teddy Kraft needs to touch the ball at least eight to ten times the ball game. And I think if he does that, he'll be, it'll be a very successful day for him because he's a spectacular athlete. Number 25, Tim Macy will handle kickoff duties for the Catamounts. We are set to go from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro. And we're underway. This is going to be a low bouncer. It's going to find its way back to Kraft. It gets it on the high hop at his own three. Good blocks. Get him past the 20 to the 30. 40 and pulled down. Yeah, you can see the excitement in that kid when he touches the ball. i like to see him continue to touch the ball three or four more times before this quarter's out. Uh, just a spectacular run by him. Teddy Kraft with great skill and brought down by Brandon Breeden. Number four, one of two number fours for Western Carolina, by the way. But Brandon Breeden bringing, bringing down Kraft with a with a good tackle because if he doesn't do it, we may be talking about Kraft's long touchdown right yeah, now. The kickoff return has been very good for Georgia Southern over the last couple of weeks. So Georgia Southern starts on offense with Jason Foster, the quarterback. Foster 
going option look, keeps, and he's surrounded. Nothing really developing on that opening play. The question is, can the Catamounts defensive line play on the other side of the ball? And that play there, they played on the other side of the ball, and that's going to be a big key for Georgia Southern is being able to keep the ball on the other side and keep the Catamounts off this. And side here's the, the guys up front trying to stop him from doing just that. Chad Moat and his mates on the Georgia Southern offensive line in the backfield. Then on Jefferson, Brandon Andrews getting the start today. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And of course, Jason Foster up under center now at quarterback. Foster will hand off to Andrews, plowing right in the middle. Oh, Foster will keep great play action. Western Carolina had 11 men within 10 yards of the ball, within eight yards of the ball. And once he broke it, it was no secondary contained. Foster, a good job with the deception as the entire defense piled into the middle on Andrews. and. Uh, Foster said, looky, looky, I'm, I'm out here on the other side. And here's that defense, Rico Reese and his uh, big fellas up front in the linebacking core, Gaffney Barnes and Conklin for the Catamounts. And Primus Glover, no stranger to the folks in the Statesboro area from nearby. But this time it is Andrews going through the middle and getting within the 35. It'll be second and short. Nice read by Lillard. They're running some triple option today where the triple option is a little different from the double option where you have three choices where the double option to see the option between the quarterback and the B-back. Now, if anyone's wondering why we're seeing a whole heavy dose of Andrews out of the gate instead of Austin, there is a reason. Yes, there is, and, and it's part of the business of football, and we'll get into it after this play. Well, there's going to be motion on the, on the right guard there. Well, one of the reasons that Austin is not playing – starting the game. He'll play, but he won't start because he was late to a meeting. And I applaud Coach Seawalk. I think you have to have discipline. Um, nobody knows the reason why. Sometimes we oversleep as players. <laughs> it just, just happens. That but never happened to you, did I, it? It happened before oh, to me, okay. so I, I don't think it's something to be blown out of proportion. But as a coach, you know, you have to take actions and move forward. And, and I think um, we'll quickly see Austin in the lineup before this quarter's up. So second and short becomes second and seven. Perhaps a different recipe of plays to choose from for the Eagles. Just a couple minutes into the ball game. Foster calling out the signals. He's got a man in motion. He's going to pitch back. And that is number 26, Marquise Maynard. If he'd have gotten a clean pitch off there, he probably would have made a big play. And, and may not look like he's a little banged up. He's limping off the field. But if he got a, if um, he would have got a good pitch off then, I think would have had a big play. Foster just pitched a little behind him. There's Maynard's numbers on the year, 94 yards. And you really have to credit Georgia Southern with what they do running the ball. Everybody puts up good numbers running the ball. Everybody puts up good. And Mark, let me explain a little more about the double and the triple option. The double option is an option between the quarterback and the B-back, which is we call a fullback, or an uh, option between the quarterback and the A-back. Now, the triple option, the, the true triple option, where it gets its name from, comes from the fullback being the first option, the quarterback being the next option, then the pitchback being the third option. And so it, when you get variations of options, but it's only one true triple option. Well, and if you're Western Carolina, that also means assignment defense. Assignment defense, and you got to know, for them, they got to pick up which one they're running because all of them look so much alike. And if anybody bites on, you know, gets off their assignment and bites for one of the options and they're wrong, yeah, certainly that's a big, big time play, play for and, Georgia. And we saw that early out of Foster in the first series. First and 10, they just got it by the nose of the football. This time it is a handoff up the center. Short gain, but you know he pulls some people forward. He wound up getting close to four yards on that. Well, and that's going to cause the Catamounts to be very disciplined on the defensive line. And you'll see today as the day progresses that discipline by the defensive line is going to be the key to whether they stopped the option or not. So far, they hadn't been able to stop them completely. The uh, not starting commandment for Austin lasted all of three minutes. He's in the game. He's got the ball. He's down to the 25. And you can see it wasn't something serious. He probably overslept, so um, we got an opportunity to see Jermaine. I'm glad to see him back in the game. And, but I applaud, once again, I applaud Coach Seawalk staying within uh, the text of a it's, team. It's a symbolic thing. You don't get to start. Certainly, and that's big on family weekend as well. Foster gives it to his up man, Austin, who bangs and plows. First contact does not bring him down, but it looks to me like he's going to come up short on that third down play. Yeah, first big decision of the ball game for Coach Seawalk. Uh, we'll see what he does here. You're in field goal range. Uh, certainly the Catamounts have not given up a point in the first and third quarter all season, so this is big for Jordan Seven. Aside from the first play from scrimmage, though, they've had positive yardage every time. 
So one might think they so can you, get this yard. You're not suggesting they go for it, are you? I, I'm saying they should maybe consider it. Consider it. How well, about that? Look like they are considering, so we'll see. There's that pile up in the middle, and you can see they, they, they did a good job bringing him down. They've done a good job thus far holding the line of scrimmage. Seawalk coaching half of his offense and giving them the play, and the crowd loves the choice. Aggressive, aggressive call, and there's going to be a timeout. And that's good to see out of, Jim out of, out of Foster, the quarterback, because everything was a little uh, confused there, and he called a timeout, and that's, that's growth. You've seen he's grown each week. He's grown as a quarterback. Now, we were here two weeks ago, and, and one of the questions going in, there was a lot of rumbling in the background and the Georgia Southern face faithful that, you know, maybe Foster wasn't, being the real field general out there. And he stepped up that day and defined himself as the man, I think. Well, he certainly did. I, I think as a quarterback, it's about progression. Each week you have to get a little better. And when you have some difficulties running the offense, you don't get too low on your mistakes. You don't get too high on your successes. It's kind of having an even kill, keeping it balanced. And I think the coaches have done a good job um, with Foster keeping him under, under wraps and letting him grow as a quarterback. So we're looking at the uh, first big play of the game here. It's a fourth down on the opening drive for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Well, I'm a little surprised we don't see Austin in on this series. Now, he's taking his medicine. So if I'm in this situation, I want to see uh, Jermaine Austin carry the ball because he's certainly not a knock against Andrews, but when the ball game's on the line, I like to see Austin uh, carry the ball. Oh, he's got some big men in there. He's got extra offensive linemen in it <laughs> in the backfield. Just power football Seawalk here. Seawalk wants yeah. the, the full house. And Andrews, number 34. Play Foster's going to keep. A, he's got a man wide open. Great time for play action. Great job by the Eagles. Number 86, Reggie McCutcheon, quarantined on the right side. Touchdown. Just a great play action. That's a great call by the offensive staff. Mike Seawalk and the offensive staff. Everybody bit on the run. You can see them biting at the teeth to get at the run. And they play action. One of the guy within you, you got a light year of it. No, nowhere around it. No one, no one even knew he was out there. They, you have to applaud the uh, salesmanship of that play because it was bringing in the hogs into the backfield. That's, that there's no way he's not running this right up the gut. He even had me believing he was going to run it with the big O lineman in the backfield, and then the play action. It was just a great, great scheme. 87 Dudley with the kick. It's a low, squirrely one, but it gets in there. And with that opening score, it is seven nothing Georgia Southern right out of the out of the first drive. You are watching Southern Conference football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Seven nothing Georgia Southern over Western Carolina. Four minutes exactly elapsed in this game. One possession, one touchdown. Here it is. Mark, it was just a great play action by the quarter. Jason did a great job of hiding the ball, selling the, selling the run, and it started on the kickoff return. Western Carolina cannot allow Georgia Southern to play on a short field. That was only a 57-yard drive and took up eight plays. Dudley, 87 on your screen, will kick off. There you go, eight plays, 57 yards, four minutes, the 23-yard scoring play. For the Catamounts, Mike Malone to return. He will hold on to it in the end zone. Touchback, they will start at their own 20. Now, Tracy, tell me about what you think this does for Western Carolina. They have not allowed any other team. Four games, no team has scored on in the first quarter. Opening possession, they give up a touchdown. I, I think the, the psyche of playing Georgia Southern just came back into play. I think when the game initially started, they really weren't worried about it, but the history is starting to say now. We had guys in a long time. We had trouble uh, We had a Six fifty one remaining in the opening period. Coming off of the Western Carolina timeout. The Catamounts knocking on the door. They are at the 15 yard line. Quarterback Justin Clark has led a very efficient drive. And now he's look out a little his backside. He tosses out to fudge another screen. He's got a chance to score on this one, and he will. Yeah, this is untouched. Nice. Caught him in a blitz. George Sutton was blitzing. Nobody picked up the black back. It should have been a linebacker engaged in the back. 
and not allow him to come free. He should have gauged him on his way to the quarterback to make sure he wasn't free releasing. But a nice design by Yes, and Clark did a good job. He, if he had held onto that ball one more second, he'd have been drilled in the back. Yeah, certainly he, was a game of inches. He got it off. He found Fudge, and Fudge had his blocking scheme ready in front of him. And uh, no one laid a hand on him that time. That show you how much we know about football. We talk about the defense and what they don't give up. And then the first drive, both teams take the ball down and score. Bang, bang, you know. And we'll see if we'll see if who, who can keep this pace up. Because the last time we were here, they pretty much did the same thing. Chattanooga answered Georgia Southern. They traded blows. But George, uh, Chattanooga couldn't keep up that pace that Georgia Southern set. Well, I think if it, if it becomes a scoring fest, it certainly enjoys Southern favor. But I don't think the defensive coach would really like to hear that. So we are tied up at seven. Each team has had the ball one time. Each team has scored a touchdown. What a start. 6.45 remaining in the opening quarter. Southern Conference football from Statesboro, Georgia. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 6.45 remaining in our opening period, and it's a tie score in Statesboro, Georgia. New name, new time, same great show. Catch Denny Sheridan on Talking Football. Sundays at 7, only on CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Well, Mark, we'll see if special teams make a difference again. Um, and as they kick the ball off here, we'll see if they keep it away from Teddy Kraft. And Kraft and McCutcheon are the deep men. It's going to be McCutcheon with the ball. And, oh, hard hit at the 30. And it's Breeden again. He's got the tackle on both kickoffs. Yeah, he's done a good job of getting down there, hustling down, and that was big for them. I think they need to keep Joyce in a long field. Um, Western Carolina was able to take the ball 80 yards in 10 plays, eating up 415, where uh, it's just been defense not been able to come up with big plays when they had an opportunity to. Western Carolina has been in low-scoring games, Georgia Southern in noticeably higher-scoring games. For Georgia Southern, a clear marker for them. And speaking of markers, there's one on the field here. We'll see what the penalty call is. You had to set that up all the way. Yeah, that, you, you know, we try to get a good segue in every now and again. Great segue. I'd make them kick it over and try to get the ball to Teddy Kraft because you can see there's some running lanes on the kickoff return here. Here's the call. Illegal formation. There's one you don't see very often. Yeah. The illegal formation comes from you, you're not allowed to have more than Six and four. The, Correct the, me if I'm wrong. No, I believe you're right on that. You can't. Yeah. There's a limit to how many you can have you on one, side, one of side of the ball. The ball the and uh, break apparently, out, you break out a rule book. You don't have your rule book in your pocket. You got to keep a rule book in your pocket. I, I apologize. Can man. we go to the truck? <laughs> <laughs> Coach Briggs is like, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah. Who who did that? <laughs> All right, get back out there. It looked like it was Mr. Lee. Might have been lined up wrong. Mr. Bruce Lee. You know, I tell you. Kent Briggs for Western Carolina. He is uh, he's had much harder things to deal with than a loss or a penalty. He uh, he was diagnosed with neck and head cancer back in May. Had surgery in June and he had chemotherapy treatments in June and July. They ended at the end of July. His whole team has been very very supportive of uh, of him and the uh, Lance Armstrong Live Strong movement uh, for cancer survivors and fighting cancer. And so a salute to Coach Briggs for uh, his success. Certainly, old football coach. It's hard to keep him off the field. Kraft does get the ball this time. Blocks setting up for him a lane, and he bounces off and spins. Still going, trying to get out of the way of his own men and pass the 40 to the 44-yard line. Mark, I, I, I'm a believer, and you'll hear me sound like a broken record. Georgia Southern have to find ways to get Teddy Kraft the ball, not just on kickoff return, but offensively as well. He's just exciting with the ball. Kraft with a great return. Sets up. He's talking about Georgia Southern in the short field. They're six yards away from the midpoint. Kraft a little gimpy that time. Hopefully nothing serious for the Eagles faithful. And Foster settles in under center. Calling the first down play. Tied at seven. Hands it up the middle to Austin. Once again, Mark, that was true triple option. That's why you saw the defensive line arm tackling because he was in between. Do I take the quarterback or do I take the D-back? And I think as Jason Foster gets comfortable with the offense, he'll learn how to read that where the guy cannot make an arm Right, tackle. and he who hesitates is certainly lost yeah. if you're trying to defend the option. And Georgia Southern is certainly happy. It's a four-yard game. Uh, they won't be mad about that long, a long four-yard game. 
Second and six. Jefferson in motion. The handoff is to Austin. He's smacked pretty good, but rolls off and gets close to another first down. This is typical Georgia Southern football. Just grinding out, knock you in the mouth kind of football. And uh, they'll play this way as long as they get positive yards on first down well, is the key. The top two yardage gainers in the Southern Conference are on your screen. Number four and number six, Foster and Austin. And they grind it out, and they'll make you, they'll put the pressure on you because the clock goes down, and you're forced to score quickly. The third down play. This time it is going to be pounded up the middle with Austin. Looks like he's across for a first down. Now, the people in the South love this type of football. Georgia Southern, this community, this area here, this is the type of football they're used to. And they're used to, uh, once they do, do throw the ball, it's wide open like you saw the play action. They're just looking used to nobody being around the receiver because you run, 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 then you come back with play action. Yeah, Foster only one pass in the game. Oh, by the way, a 23-yard touchdown. Touchdown. So very efficient with the ball. Foster keeps, but he's surrounded, does a good job eluding the pursuit in the backfield, turns it out right. There's a flag down, could be a holding as they try to hold the blocks when, the, when Foster changed direction. Yeah, when that happens, you, the offensive line got to learn just to let him go and let Foster be Foster because he certainly has the speed to get around the corner without anybody holding. And it may not be holding. We'll see. The call from referee Riley Johnson on its way. It's your first big call of the game. Is it holding? Well, you'll just wait and see. <laughs> I'm just uh, waiting. You... They got the face, face mask, mask on that one. So once, so I take that back from the offensive lineman. You know, the offensive lineman only hear about it when they make mistakes. So guys, I give apologize. Them the, give them the credit on that one. Great job up front by the judges on the offensive line. It does, it does happen a lot on these kind of plays where you're reversing field and they want to hold blocks, but they did a good job this time. And yeah, just, just slapped at the just face mask. It, right. And a good call by the fish making it a five yarder, not the um, 15 yarder. And you can see, um, West, they did a great job with the defensive scheme to the front side, but they have so many people in the box meaning from the tackle to the tackle, if he get out the back door, there's nobody there. First and 10 from the 25, Jefferson in motion. Foster hands inside. They'll push the pile close to the 20. Now there's gonna be some sore young men tomorrow, tomorrow with the O-line and the D-line for uh, Western Carolina and offensive line for Georgia Southern because you can just see the head banging up front there and it's just, just, just smash mouth football. There's a look at Andrews, number 34, and Foster, your quarterback. You have to give Andrews a lot of credit. He's sitting behind the one of the best backs in there. You look at the total yards, uh, 84 to 92, really close. Georgia Southern been playing and, on the short And keep field. in mind, for Western Carolina, that's one drive. Georgia Southern, that's two. There you go, wide open. In the middle of the field, it's McCutcheon again. It's the play action. Once again, they run, run, run. You get so run heavy on defense that you forget that there is such thing as pass. Two touchdown receptions for McCutcheon, who in this offense has to wonder when he's going to get a multi-touchdown <laughs> game, and he's got a two in the first quarter today. This great call, play caller by Georgia Southern offensive staff, Mike Siwa, did a great job play calling, and that's what they're used to. You run, 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 and when you play action, it's so wide open that it doesn't have to be a precision pass, but it has to get there. Congratulated by everybody on the sideline, but perhaps happiest for him and glad to see it. Teddy Kraft, number 85, is fellow wide receiver. The kick is up and good from Dudley. And we've had three drives in this game, and each one has ended in the end zone. Well, well Georgia Southern's playing on the short field. Um, you got you to give Western Carolina offense a lot of credit because they went the distance with the drive, 80 yards. But when you look at Georgia Southern, uh, they've had a short field. And, and I, I just thought it was a great play call by uh, Mike Seawalk because you, you know Western Carolina was um, looking for the the, the run. Then you look at the play action call, uh, right up the scene from the slot position, but he had his hand down. And the difference was he had his hand down as a tight end, where they used to seeing him as a A back. No hesitation by Foster. The pass, a good job by McCutcheon to adjust because it's a yes. little bit behind him and low. Yes. I mean, when you're that wide open, all you want to do as a quarterback is get it out there in a catchable position and make sure that you squeeze the ball. Those are the toughest catches in football right there. Wide open by yourself. And Bruce Lee, the defender, coming over a little bit late. We're gonna, we'll, we'll try to avoid any cheesy Bruce Lee jokes. <laughs> it's, it's too easy. We're just going to take a pass. Way too easy. 
six plays, 56 yards, two minutes and 29 seconds. 22-yard touchdown, a 23-yarder and a 22-yarder to McCutcheon, the two touchdowns today for Georgia Southern. For the really young fans out there, Bruce Lee, martial artist, very yes. famous. Don't, don't worry about it. Ask your mom, ask uh, your dad. Quit kicking me up here, please. <laughs> no kicking in the booth. There's Dudley. Another kickoff coming, 416 remaining in the first quarter. You gotta be concerned if you Western Carolina defense because you really have not established that you can stop anything. And so you're gonna have to back some people up off and just be with the run. They haven't even slowed him down much either. Dudley. Kick will be fielded at about the one yard line and dropped. That may upset the timing of the tacklers because in this time we see Mike Malone get out to about the 23, 24 yard line. Now you you got to be concerned if you Western Carolina defense. I want to finish that thought, Mark, because simply they have not established that they can stop anything, and you got to stop. And what they're saying, we're going to stop the run. Well, you haven't stopped it. They've gotten four plus yards a clip, and then if you're going to give them the pass, and I think it's simply because they have too many people within eight yards of the ball. There may be an irony here because Western Carolina came in number one in the conference in pass defense, and they've surrendered two passing touchdowns. Their rushing defense, uh, not quite as strong middle of the pack, and they could be in for a long day on that side of the ball. Clark keeps it, he's looking downfield, he's got a man, it's Hines, cuts into the middle of the field, and brought down at the 30, excellent play, and I gotta tell you, the Western Carolina pass offense is sharp today. Yeah, Justin Clark has come in, he's done a great job of doing just what he's been supposed to do all week. They felt like they can throw the ball on Georgia Southern, and now if you're the Georgia Southern defense, you gotta be concerned because <laughs> you haven't stopped yeah. the pass at all. Now they've stopped the run, but they haven't got any pressure on the quarterback, and you can see here there's no pressure on, on Clark, and he makes a good throw. Good play action, the defense bit on the run fake, and Hines was running alone and talking a little smack at the end as well. Yeah, that's what they do, we make big plays. You know. <laughs> Clark under center, 347 and ticking down. He'll hand in to number one, Nicholas Wishart. Wishart from Ontario, from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. You don't uh, get a lot of Canadians in the Canadian. Southern Conference. Good to see the Canadian uh, venture down south. And Wishart may be a familiar name to some of the Georgia Southern fans out there because two years ago when he was a freshman, he rattled off 104 yards in the first quarter here in Statesboro. That's and yet Western Carolina still lost. That's to be remembered. Let's see if Georgia Southern defensive line can get any kind of pressure on the quarterback. Um, they've done a good job in their play selection. Let's see if they can keep the rhythm of Clark going. Catamounts line up in the eye. Clark back to throw. Pumps and looks to the right side off the hands of Hines. Well, just a nice defensive job there uh, by number two. Barr. Lewis Barr, the Lewis did a great senior. job. Excellent job by the senior. That's what you want from your seniors to come up and make big plays. The one North Carolina player on the Georgia Southern squad. Now that's irony, huh? Winston, out of Winston Salem. But you can see there's no pressure on Clark at all. He has time. He got late pressure, but he had more than enough time to get the ball off. And so the Cal Western Carolina offensive line is doing a very good job of protecting that quarterback. Bar did a good job getting a hand, and it sets up a big third down play. Clark, six of eight, 95 yards here in the first quarter. He's going to line up in the shotgun on the third and eight play from the 29. He's got protection. Man open in the middle, and that's good for a first down. Looked like number 11, J.C. Brown, who we saw also throw a nice pass earlier in the game. Brown played a little uh, quarterback in high school, he did. Yeah, you can tell he's a very athletic uh, individual. He did a good job of, of uh, moving the defense the way he wanted him, and then there was nobody in the field. We, Joy Southern's getting no pressure on the quarterback, and that's kind of like fishing in a bowl. Yeah, they they had a, there's Brown's numbers, 13 receptions on the year, 208 yards, averaging 16 yards a catch. So certainly an average that uh, most would be quite satisfied with. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first quarter. 14-7 Georgia Southern, but here comes Western Carolina again. It's Wishart leaping over a man. He may get a yard or two out of this. Though. I'll tell you what I like about the Western Carolina offense is that they're very balanced. Um, they don't. They haven't abandoned the run, but they've given the Georgia Southern enough run so that when they run, their play action is very effective. Clark looking to the sideline for the play call. Catamounts in the purple and gold and the blue and white for Georgia Southern. Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. The bank, Still in the first not, quarter. Play. Not, not many people on the banks today because they're a little wet, so you'll see more people in the stands today than you see on the banks. Had a lot of rain here. Clark immediately throws right. It's Fudge. He's got a block, tries to cut back into the middle. He'll get to the 10. 
And Georgia Southern defense rallied to the ball well. You can see that Western Carolina's getting the ball out of his hands quick, getting it to their playmakers. Fudge is one of their playmakers, and uh, they're doing a good job of getting the ball out of Clark's hands as Georgia Southern sent a blitz there, and they got the ball out before the blitz could get there. As you see the blitz coming off the corner there, and just step and turn, step and he and threw turn, it right yeah. there. So it's going to set up a third and short. They're at about one and a half, two yards here at the 10. Western Carolina's done a good job scouting Georgia Southern, but they blitzed several times down here, and they've had the perfect play call to the blitz. Eagles fans trying to rally the troops, and it's going to be a tackle for a loss. Great penetration. Looked like big number 94, Jack Sherman, the hero on that play. Yeah, great penetration by Sherman. He did a good job of getting on the other side of the ball. And once he got him to run it back for us, running east and west, uh, he had no chance. Sherman, the Senior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Once you see him get the penetration here, Fudge having to run east and west. Um, third and short, you want to be running downhill, north and south. Had him run east and west. So great defensive penetration. It's going to force a field goal try. There's a look at Sherman, 245 pounder. Number 39, Stephen Brown kicks it up, and that is no good. That never had a shot. Never had a chance. Looked like he just, from the start, he never got a good kick. He never got good contact with the ball. And it's tough because they did a good job driving the ball there. And you, uh, As a coach, you want to see him come away with some Well, point. for Western Carolina, it was really looking to be the Justin Clark drive. In the end, it's the Jack Sherman drive because it's his play yes. that changes that whole thing. They're, they are... Third and short at the 10 yard line. They lose yardage. They miss the field goal. Georgia Southern gets the ball back. What a, what a momentum switcher that is right there because it looks like Western Carolina is about to answer back yeah. one more time. And you see here we got a quarterback change. Not really sure. Well, got a quarterback change. You got Foster out. Um, just trying to find different ways to get Foster into the ball game. And you got Darius Smiley, Smiley yeah, at we quarterback. So this is very interesting set for them. Well, we saw Smiley score a couple touchdowns the last time CSS was here in Statesboro. He'll throw to his left and dropped by Foster. Smiley has really has a live arm. You see him put that red on his numbers, and I think Foster's trying to run sooner than he, before he could get the ball. It's an interesting set. You know, Foster's such a good athlete. You can move him around. Well, Seawalk has so many weapons. It is, it is impressive. It's, you know, Smiley doesn't start, but he can be put in there and click at any time. you got Kraft and McCutcheon at receiver. Foster and Austin normally running the ball, but then you want to change it up a little bit. You give it to Andrews or Jefferson. And, and Foster was a full-time receiver last year. That's where he won freshman of the year at because he's so excited. So I wouldn't be so. Um, They're going to do the same play. You say, this time you're going to catch it, son. You're going to catch it. Great job. Man. You know, they didn't make the adjustment defensively, so coach did a good job of coming back with a the play. They're going to force the defense to adjust. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like similar. It was the same, same play. play. And they can run the option out this set as well. So when you see the guy go in motion and what would they call tail motion when he'll come right behind the quarterback, let's see if they run any option out of this, this set. Oh, trips right, stacked. <laughs> Kraft, Foster. And Jefferson, hello. That's a lot of talent on that side. The field's yes. almost leaning because there's so much talent on that side of the Francis ball. Brown is up on him. He's like, um, help, little help here. And it's going to be a handoff to Austin in the middle of the field, which is open. Now you mentioned everybody but Austin. <laughs> Foster and Austin running the ball. I said it. Okay, said okay. It. Austin, you forget about him, and now they're coming out to set. They're bringing him out of the game. I don't know. I'd like to see some more of that because it was really getting fun there watching what they could do out of that set. Yeah, Georgia Southern pulling them all out of the bag right now. I think they understand how big a ball game this is for them because whoever loses this ball game is really in a tough spot in the conference standing. Foster back under center. He's going to keep and met and brought down slowly in stages we by the Western to, Carolina defense. We need to defense. check his weight because he certainly didn't look like he wore 165 pounds at that stage at 5'9". He was carrying people. And the first quarter comes to a close on that play. 14-7 favoring the Georgia Southern Eagles who have the ball once again trying to drive against Western Carolina. You're watching Southern Conference football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Time for the second quarter of play. Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia on CSS. I'm Mark Bryant, my partner in the booth, Tracy Ham, and it is Georgia Southern 14, Western Carolina 7. Georgia Southern Eagles have the ball. 
if Jordan Southern scores on this drive, it really puts a lot of pressure on the Western Carolina staff, offensive staff, and the offensive side of the ball. And we started to make a point earlier. Georgia Southern, in its wins, 40-plus points. In its losses, 20 or less. So they like that pace. Yeah, they certainly do, um, especially when the defense is stopping people and they're scoring. They're scoring with the football. Uh, Georgia Southern has the key for Georgia Southern is to get positive yards on first down. They have to get four plus yards on first down or it's, a, it's not a successful play. Now, we mentioned earlier Western Carolina coming into this game had not surrendered any first quarter points. They've given up 14 in the first quarter today. On the other side, Western Carolina has not scored any second quarter points themselves. They have got to reverse that trend or they will be in such a hole at the break given the way this is going. They might be in a in a rough spot indeed. Austin says no, just, not bringing me just down. Just power football. You know he got he's already low center of gravity to the ground, and so when you hit him, if you hit him anywhere from the waist up, it's going to be a bounce off and continue. Low, low center of gravity is a is a polite way of saying he's short. He's yeah. he's five eight. But what a powerful run here! Look right there, just bounces but, man, off the linebacker. He had no chance of tackling him then. He winds up being Francis Brown, number two, bringing him down in the end. This time it's going to be Austin again. First contact one more time does not bring him down and he'll get close to the 30. I, I don't think people realize how shifty he is as well as powerful. And when you compact it in there like that, he's just a big, a short, powerful kid. I want to say big, but he's not big tall wise, but physically he's just a power pack back. He's going to take a breather. Well, they change sets. And as you see, Jermaine is nine for 50 yards, nine rushes for 50 yards, and right there he's on pace. He's have a heck of a day. Foster on second and three. Going to keep it. Go right. He's got one man to beat, and does he gets the block? Horse collar tackle at the 20. You can you can see um, Western Carolina is doing things right defensively, but the athletic ability of the Georgia Southern players seem to be to overcome them doing it right. Western Carolina is adjusting play to play. Georgia Southern, I think, is adjusting within plays. Within plays, because right there, uh, it was a double option between the quarterback and the V-back. He missed the read. And you know who came back and got him that springing block? Teddy Kraft. Teddy Kraft. Um, and he actually missed the read. But when you miss the read, normally you're taught to follow the play. But when you're that athletic, you can go where you want to go and still get first down. Foster, four rushes, 31 yards. I believe he actually has more passing yards than running yards this time. Yeah, that's. He I, didn't I, throw a pass till the third quarter last time we were here. I think that trend will change for the days <laughs> out. Man. As you see, Western Carolina do a good job there defensively stacking up the play. And when they control the line of scrimmage, they stop Judge Southern. When they don't, it's big plays. Brandon Andrews had the carry, blasted into the line. Only a gain of about two. And, you know, when you come off playing a team um, that throws the ball and you have a uh, 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 I, I think it's just a case of Joy Southern staying consistent. And Coach Briggs, is, you know, he, he's concerned. And he has a right to be. Foster looking to throw. He's got a man in the end zone. Intercepted. No. Nope. Did he drop it? They call incomplete. it incomplete. Right in the bread basket of Glover. I, I, I thought he had that one. I thought the ground caused the fumble, but the refs say otherwise. Um, he just never set his feet. and He can put no zip on the ball, and they had good pressure. Primus Glover, I think he had that one right between the two and the one in the end zone. Right between the two and the run, and Primus being a local kid would have an opportunity to make some people really proud from Springfield, Georgia. Yeah, he's he's still, I think he's still looking for the call. <laughs> he's, he's a man, I caught that we, ball. We might need to bring instant replay back. Uh, to, to the Southern Conference? To the Southern bring, Conference. Bring, it bring instant replay to the Southern Conference. It's, it's slowly finding its way everywhere, isn't it? Are you a proponent of the I, I do like it. I like it. You know, I don't think you should use it every play. You know, there's sometimes where it goes to it too often, but on critical plays, yes. Foster juking and driving in the backfield, and now he's free inside the 10 to the 5. He scores the touchdown. Great, great athletic play by Justin Foster. You can see why they waited on him to become the type of player he has become this day. They take his mistakes, but they live with him. They live with his mistakes, but you can see the upside. It looked like that play fractured a couple different ways, and Foster just adjusted once, twice, and... I'll, I'll do it myself. And this is why Coach, Fa Coach, Coach, Coach Briggs got to be concerned because his defense is doing things right, but Jordan Southern is doing well, things better than they're doing. Is it a case of great talent beating great schemes? Well, I, I think it is. I think the talent level at Jordan Southern, the skill position, 
uh, is better than the talent level at the skill position for Western Carolina and it's put him in a tough position now. Dudley to tack on the extra point. He does. 21-7. And Western Carolina needs to adjust fast if this one's not going to get out of hand just as fast. 12.35 remaining in the opening half. 21-7, Georgia Southern leading Western Carolina. You're watching Southern Conference College Football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Come back to Statesboro, Georgia Southern, 21-7 on top in the second quarter of play. I want to remind you, top 10 teams collide when the fourth-ranked Georgia Bulldogs visit number seven, Tennessee. Oh, my goodness, top 10, SEC East. What a battle. Last season, Tennessee posted a 19-14 victory in Athens to snap the Bulldogs' four-game win streak in the series. Don't miss Georgia and Tennessee Monday at 8. Tuesday at 7, only on CSS. Well, Dudley's already been pressed into service a lot today. Here he is to kick off one more time. Mom. Waiting for it deep. Number 42, Mike Malone, gets it at his three. His blockers try to shape up. They fake a little misdirection. He keeps it himself. Works right side, out to close to the 30. That's positive for Western Carolina because they were reeling for a minute there. And I think by no means is this game out of hand. Uh, but it's on the verge of getting out of hand if uh, they're not able to do something positively here on offense. If Primus Glover holds on to that ball in the end zone, this is a, this is a probably a different football game right now because the, you talk about the momentum and getting out of hand. There's that scoring drive, 11 plays, 80 yards, 2 minutes, 56 seconds, the 18-yard touchdown run, which was all Foster. All Foster. Right after the dropped interception, Clark goes right. Nothing doing on this play. Oh, well, squirrels squirts away. And just something about a blitz from that side. So once again, Western Carolina offensive staff, they're doing it. They have the right game plan for Georgia Southern. They threw a hitch pass right into the blitz. So the corner come off the corner, safety move over the top. So there's no flat defender to cover that. So um, right play calling, they just got to sustain it. And the good news, folks, is the sun came out. But the bad news is the sun came out because <laughs> it is going to be a steam bath yeah, out here. we, we got to keep an eye on the Western Carolina players as well because this type of weather, certainly George Southern is used to it, and they've been running a lot of players in and out of the game. Clark, hands off up the middle. That's going to get close to a first down. It's going to set up a third and short fudge on the carry. Well, I, I think this is another, we will mark this in our play calling right here. We'll see what play call, because this is a big, big down. I think Western Carolina almost have to get a, a first down here. And you can see the statistics are starting to get lopsided in the rushing department. So we'll see what happens here. I think it's really big for Western Carolina to get a first down. And if you enjoy the Southern, you want to stop them. Crowd trying to rally behind the Eagles, and they want to stomp on Western Carolina early. It's 21-7 and a big play. Clark's going to call timeout. The second for the Catamounts. Excellent timeout because the play clock was running down under five seconds. Wouldn't have had a time to get a chance to read the defense and set the play that they wanted. Um, just you can tell he has a, a lot of maturity he's played and, and the maturity level showed there because this is a big, big play at this stage of the game. So with the timeout on the field, we'll take a timeout in the booth. 11.07 to play in the first half. 21-7 Georgia Southern. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast. 21-7 is our score. Georgia Southern on top of Western Carolina. 11.07 remaining in the second quarter, and the Catamounts have the ball. There's Glover, and Primus Glover hanging his head on the sideline a little bit, wishing what might have been. He dropped one in the end zone. It would have been an interception that could have cut the score off at 14-7 and given Western Carolina the ball. Instead, Georgia Southern promptly scores again and makes that hole deeper for the Catamounts. Big third down play. Fighting for it, and very close, but I believe short, and they're going to say right away, fourth down. Fourth down. You made the first big call of the day, short. Yeah. And I think, uh, and now if you're Coach Briggs, what do you do? You, do you go for it, or do you, um, first I'd ask for a measurement. Yeah, that's by the, the time, they're I, entitled to the measurement. That's but. the first thing I do if I'm the coach. Well, he's bringing out his punt team, so the decision has already been made. Um, he's it, too far in his own territory, yeah. I'd think. But I'd ask for a measurement because then that'd buy me some time to see if I want to go for it or not. And then while they're measuring, I can discuss what I want to do. So you can see he asked for it. Um, he's an old veteran coach. You know, he knows how to buy time for himself. Um, asking for a measurement is close enough to ask for it. 
and then that'll allow him to discuss if he want to go for it or not. And yeah. as close as it is, they just they just eyeballed it, and he right. you know he, yeah. he very well should ask yeah. for it. And your quarterback six two two fifteen. If it's that close, you probably can sneak it. Um, it's going to be the length of the ball. Um, I don't think it's a bigger risk as we tend to think on fourth down because, but it's still a risk. Um, going for it on fourth down, this in the field. Well, you talk about a short field for Georgia Southern. <laughs> they don't get it. That's as short as you're going to give somebody right there. Right. Uh, this is a They're going to go. Yeah, great coach move by uh, Coach Briggs asking for the measurement to give himself time to come up with the play without having to use a timeout. And the crowd comes alive. 10.40 to play in the second quarter. You don't want to overstate something, but this is... This is a this is a ball game making play for Western Carolina. Certainly, they're gonna have ever have a chance of getting up into that big three, which they call the Southern Conference, the App State, the Furman, the Georgia Southern. They have to do things like this and make first down. And he's gonna get it, I think. But wow, just by the stretch at the end. I tell you, that was a now that was more risk than the going for it itself. Ha take, taking a drop back and handing it off in the backfield there when, you know, shortest distance between two points is your straight line. You would have thought they would have just gone right up the middle or tried to sneak. Yeah, certainly with that uh, distance, only inches, I, I thought he would have uh, sneaked the ball, but he didn't, and he made it, so he's, that's why he's uh, down there. And we yeah, exactly here. right, as long yeah. as he gets it. Yeah, certainly. And so, Justin Clark, number 18, Leading his team, J.C. Brown in motion. It's going to be a handoff to Fudge, working the left side and close to the 40. Mooring in on the tackle. Mooring's been all over the field today. He, you know, he's been a, he's been playing sideline to sideline. One thing we want to watch carefully is McBride, number 32, is in at cornerback. He's replaced the starting cornerback, um, Lewis Barr. So I don't know if Lewis is injured or not. Um, I'm looking for him on the sideline. I haven't seen him, but. Um, the way Western Carolina's been throwing the football, you think they may take a couple shots at uh, McBride, number 32, Terrence McBride, cornerback out of, um, where is Terrence out of uh, Sumter, South Carolina? So let's see if they uh, seen that from upstairs and see if they take a shot at it. There's Justin Clark, mooring in on the rush. The th the throwaway actually finds Hines, yeah, but they, he tips it and it goes out of bounds. First time he's been on his back throwing the ball today. They finally got some pressure on him, made him throw on the run. He, it's much more difficult to throw on the run uh, for Clark than it is when he set his feet because he's more effective. Watch him, his feet never get set. He sees the pressure, and he's throwing going back, and that's tough for a quarterback, any quarterback at Big that. time backpedal, and it was John Mooring leading the charge, and with him was Renard Montford. So Joyce Southern defense has picked it up. You know, at one time they looked so vulnerable, and now, once again, we still see seven on the board, and it hadn't changed for um, quite a bit here. Third and about seven or eight. Clark giving the hand signals, lined up in the shotgun. It's going to be a handoff up the middle, and Mooring is right on top of it. What a great tackle by Mooring. Just shot the gap, nobody untouched. It looked like they had a big play, it looked like there was a hole, but Mooring closed it off quickly. He's having an outstanding ball game. You know those ropes that tie things down to other things? They call them mooring lines. Well, he's tying them down out yeah, there today. Yeah. He's certainly the leader of Georgia Southern defense. You can see when, when he's one of the few guys on this defense that has been an outstanding tackler. Uh, when he gets his hands on you, you don't go anywhere. And you better believe they're punting now on fourth and eight. Kraft gets the ball in immediate contact. About two yards on the return. Yeah, Kraft is a good athlete, but when you got five against one, it's not the odds are against you. He did a good job just fielding the punt. In those situations, the coach really just wants to see you feel the punt and not lose ground. There's Teddy Kraft, number 85. Junior out of Hartwell. He's going to take it to the sidelines for this play. Foster back in at quarterback. Well, the sun is going behind the clouds, so that'll, that'll go well for Western Carolina because you can see a feel of cool breezes come back out. Um, that'll keep them fresh, but in the, the bottom line is they got to control the line of scrimmage at some point in time. Foster to Austin. That looks like a face mask, and there goes the flag. Austin looked like he got a little banged up there. Um, that was Felipe grabbing the face mask. No, I'm sorry, that was Rico Reese, the leader on defense, grabbing the face mask there. And that's, that's the case where you really don't know where the ball is at. He really didn't know where the ball was at. And it's going to be a 15-yarder. 
And it probably contributed to Austin's limping, too, because he got pulled back by his head, and I think it twisted his whole body. Yes, it did. And you can see, when you don't really know where the ball is, you can see him on the bench. I think he might have just twisted his ankle. He, had, he has had ankle one, trouble one in, more time. in the past. He didn't really know where the ball was at, and he jumped out to try to defend the quarterback, and he just had to reach back in to, to make a play. I think it's more Reese landing on him yeah, as, as, yeah. He, as with, the, with the foot planted in the muddy ground. And they're working on the ankle, it appears, right now mm -hmm. on the bench. There's the penalty yardage. Georgia Southern has only been tagged for five yards. Western Carolina, 29 yards so far. And Foster keeps. Darts left across midfield. And again, that... That's illegal in the NFL now. Not in college. Not, Western in, Carolina, not in here. And Western Carolina is glad it's not illegal in college because that's the only way he would stop the score from there. Uh, once again, it was a double option between the B-back and the quarterback and what we call a three technique. You can see the three the three technique bit on the fullback and then Foster just ran between the tackles. So quick, they just drag him down from behind the old, the, what they call the horse collar tackle, grab him by the the neck and shoulder pads and just drag him backwards. That's the kind of thing that, that really hurt Terrell Owens in uh, the NFL and prompted a rule change. This time the handoff does go up the middle. And you can see George Sutton is starting to impose this offensive wheel on the Western Carolina defense. And what I mean by that is they're getting now three, four yards of carry, and they're satisfied with that because they know if they continue to grind it out, that they'll wear them down before the game's over. Well, if you know you're going to get four yards of play, you'll never lose. Never lose. Because you'll always get the never first lose. downs and you'll always move the ball. And, and in the football world, we call that stand on schedule. And then the Joy Southern can stay on schedule. It's a very effective offense. Tight power lineup. Ball will go to Andrews. He's met abruptly at the 40. It's going to set up a third and three for the Eagles. 7-10 remaining in the half. Joy Southern's doing a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage. And, they'll, and, and when you're looking at it from a, on the television, it doesn't look like that was a successful play. But Joy Southern's very happy with the uh, results of that play because it keeps them on schedule. Austin standing again up at the sideline, up front. Coach, look at me. I'm standing. I'm here. I'm right <laughs> at the edge of the field. And nudge the coach with the shoulder pass. Smiley in at quarterback. He's got Jefferson behind. Jefferson in motion, rather, and Andrews behind. Smiley will keep. And he's going to be short. Yeah, he's going to be short. Did a good job by the defensive line. Western Carolina defensive line did a good job. Georgia Southern has a decision now. Do they go for it? It's really no man's land. Uh, I think with the production they've had, I think you go for it because, um, you know, you, you're really controlling the line of scrimmage. Darius Smiley, number nine. Junior out of Pensacola. He's going to come to the sideline. You know, Foster I, back in. I, I think in that situation, I, I would have rather seen set with the ball in his hands because he's been so effective today um, carrying the ball, making people miss. Uh, first big play for Georgia Southern offensively as well as his West play Carolina. clock is almost shot and Foster sees it now as he takes a quick look up. Got it with one second left on the play clock, which would have changed a fourth and four to a fourth and nine. Good timeout. Um, good, good to see the young kid being aware of the situation. And that's quarterback awareness. I think it's so important that your quarterback is aware of the situation around them at all times. So with six minutes remaining in the second quarter, each team has one timeout left. Western Carolina Catamounts need a major stand here on fourth and four. They cannot afford to let the Eagles just march in one more time. Well, and, and it seems like this is a high-risk play, but it's not that risky for George Southern because if you punt it, it may be a plus 15-yard punt, unless you pin them deep down in, in, inside their own 10, which right. is it's tough to do for punters. And then it's out of field goal range, so you're in that gray area. Um, I think if the ball game was a little, if it was a one-score game, I think he may punt it. Sure. But since it's a two-score game, he's really trying to put some distance between his offense and well, the two teams, he's trying to put some distance between Joy Southern and Western Carolina. We're at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. CSS, proud to bring you Southern Conference football. I'm Mark Bryant. Tracy Ham with me in the booth here. It's our second of three Georgia Southern games we're bringing you on CSS. Look for, uh, look for us again in a couple weeks when the Citadel pays a visit to Statesboro. Well, Mark, let's switch hats. If you're the coach, what do you do here? 
Well, I'm going for it here because I don't think they've got a lot to lose. Like you say, a punt's not going to get them a lot of a lot of yardage territory gain. A a first down is a de, is a demoralizing factor for Western Carolina, and I think in this situation you run the option and make every defensive player in Western Carolina accountable for somebody. There's the timeout situation, one apiece. Okay, coach. Let's see if you you get to. Um... And he's going to throw Foster. Surrounded, darts through, he's going to get the first down. What an adjustment again. That's why I would have preferred to see Foster at quarterback the last series, the last play, because he can do that with ease. He's shown today that he's the best player on the field, and so you always want to keep the ball the best player on the field because they had him. They defended really well here, but what they don't do well is stay in their passing lanes. Corey Ellison was one of the tacklers in and had him had a phantom back there. He thought, he's like, there was a man right here, I swear. I almost tackled him. Foster lost a shoe on the play. And that's just as good as a run for George Southern to drop back and pass. is no different for George Southern as a run because if, if it's not crystal clear for Foster, he'll run the ball. There's Smiley back in under center, and he'll give it to Austin. Austin, over people, around people, <laughs> to the 25. Look at me, coach, I'm ready. Yep. <laughs> so he's back in the flow. You know you are not going to keep him out of game of two because this really is a big big ball game. I can't overemphasize how big a ball game this is for both teams. Well you're looking at a, a Western Carolina team that that opened up with two wins and had to feel good about life and then followed it up with two losses. So they're down to two and two, one and one in conference. Georgia Southern on the other hand stumbled out of the gate and then adjusted well and they're back in the, on the winning side to three and two, two and one in conference but they do not want to see another conference loss on their slate. Certainly not. And they got big ones upcoming. App State and Furman are still on the schedule out there. Well, and if you Western Carolina, as they stop them for little or no gain there, if you Western Carolina, you beat Furman, and then you come back and lose to Citadel. And if you're going to win the conference, you got to win games that, quote, unquote, you expected to win. And elsewhere in the Southern Conference today, Elon and Wofford uh, set to begin shortly. And App State and Furman, they'll play at 3.30. That'll be a game to watch. That'll be a game to watch. How about... How about UConn beating Syracuse 26 to seven? Like a East. drum. Like a <laughs> drum, wow. Syracuse, had, you know, since they put the numbers on the helmets, it hasn't been quite the same for them. Smiley with Andrews behind him. Andrews will get the ball, trying to plow through the middle. He gets across the 20 for a first down. Under four minutes to play in the second quarter. Well, what George Southern doing with this set here, they put two tight ends, which are actually two offensive linemen. So now instead of having Six, five offensive linemen, they bring in, they have seven offensive linemen with the two tight ends. It's just the, what they call the elephants, which is their big set. Don't Official want time. Don't want any parents to get mad at me. I'm not calling <laughs> their kids the elephants, but it's what they call the big well, elephants. You well, know, I, I, you know, we called them hogs <laughs> earlier, actually, so it's, it's, it's a zoo out here. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna measure. We got catamounts, we got eagles, hogs, elephants, and this is actually so, a wee bit short. I thought he had pulled them forward enough. Fans don't like it. They, they think maybe he got a little cheated on the spot, I guess. Yeah, but you know George Southern's going for this. If you go for fourth and four, you're certainly going to go for fourth and inches, and um, they'll do – I think they'll give it to Austin up the middle. What do you think? That's a, de that's a decent enough call, <laughs> even if you got ten yards to go. <laughs> I, we'll probably see a quarterback sneak here um, because it's such a short distance. I always like putting announcers in coaching role because you get to step out if the play's not the right play. You go, well, oh, he should have done that. So it's a great oh, it's, seat to be in. It's, it's, uh, it, you know, for you having been on the field and leading it down there, it does give you a whole different look when you're up here and you can see everybody from above. This is why they always station a few coaches up. And Foster is going to sneak and push forward. Great line play. Yeah, when inside you, the 20. When you control a line of scrimmage, um, it, it, nothing's automatic in football, but that is as close as automatic as you can get. Less than three and a half to go now in the second quarter. Time stops to move the chains. 21-7, Georgia Southern out in front. They'll have a first and 10 from the 19-yard line. And it's just been a grind-out series for Georgia Southern. They've done a lot of things well. Western Carolina defensively has had opportunities but it came down to they could not stop Foster. The uh, totals for Georgia Southern, 183 yards on the ground, 56 in the air. And this play, this play never happened. So there are flags everywhere. Might have had an illegal motion by Judge Southern. 
Yeah, it looked like we had an illegal motion by Georgia Southern, but you gotta, you gotta uh, really appreciate Georgia Southern coaching staff having this team ready to play at where we are at this junction in the season because you get into the meat of your scheduling. Mike Seawalk had a, has done a good job of getting his offensive unit ready to play against a tough, tough defense. And, you know, statistically-wise, Western Carolina has been one of the better defenses in the conference. There's Sam Baker. Brady, our own Brady Posick is going to have a talk with him at halftime, learn a little bit more about how things are going in Georgia Southern Athletics. What, what a great shot of an AD, man. Sam uh, never stops pacing. He'll pace. He used to pace on the sideline, and then he had to. It's 21-7, and he's got a first <laughs> down, and he's pacing. He's pacing, right. Go figure, huh? Foster with three seconds on the play clock, gets it off, rolls right. He's got a block, spins in down to the 15, pulled back to the 16-yard line. They'll mark it at the 15. It was a rollout, but it was a run all the way rollout because you can see guys blocking. Foster looked like he's a little shaken up on that play. Maybe got right through the eyes, but that's when the Darius Smiley is the, becomes a great backup because he's been in the game already, so he's already used to the flow. It's a real yeah. easy transition. Yeah, they can just switch him in and out. They, they really have a great grasp of the offense, and yeah, it looks like the eyes yeah, for Foster. Like he might have got right across the eyes, but all that twisting and turning is bounds of fingers to get in your eyes. Western Carolina doesn't have that same luxury for switching out quarterbacks. They've got Clark, and behind him is normal backup Michael McQueenie out with mononucleosis. They could go with Josh Lee or J.C. Brown. Smiley throws the ball out to McCutcheon. Yeah. Or, no, I'm sorry, 26, not 86, and that is Marquise Maynard. Marquise Maynard's had a chance to get open in space against a one defender, and I think Georgia Southern liked those odds. When they can get their ball carrier in space against one defender, they feel good about those odds. So Maynard with the drop, and clearly frustrated with himself, is going to come off the field for a play. Two the, minutes remaining. In, in, I'm sorry, Mark, but these drives really, really um, put a pressure on the other team's offense because they've been on the sideline for uh, eight minutes, and it, you know, they just get rusty. There's what they've done on third downs. Georgia Southern has performed pretty well, and this time eh, he's right at it. Right at it. Officials promptly say fourth down. Yeah, and I think he's going to go for it. I, I think at some point in time here, I'd take the points because it's been a really good drive for him. And I know you say, well, why wouldn't you take him back there? Well, you, you're in a position where points is king. At some point in time, you got to take the points. Um, it'd be interesting to see it's, it's fourth and inches. Um, you know he's going for it. Make no mistake about it. Uh, with a minute 20 left in the half, and if he, gives, if he doesn't make it, Western Carolina gets the ball with the whole field right. to go. It's going to be close. This is going to come down to a spot and a measurement because right he foot, didn't get foot. very far. He didn't get very far at all. So at some point in time, I think you've got to take the points when you've done, you know, sometimes we get, uh, want the seven so bad that we forget that points are king. Um, I, I think they're short because I, I don't, I didn't see any movement. I didn't see any movement from the line of scrimmage there. Western Carolina did a good job of getting under the pad level, the offensive lineman for Georgia Southern. So um, if they stopped them, uh, Western Carolina got to feel good about themselves going into halftime because it'll be the only thing they've stopped all day. Here come the chains. The nose of the football is at it. It's a first down. Wow, the game of inches. Game of inch. <laughs> that was <laughs> that when he right could there. Put the S on the end of inches mm, then. So, mm, mm. well, once again, you know, it's the it ended up being right. Um, but just my opinion, I think when you get in those situations, points are king. You have a minute, 15 going and counting. Um, you, 24 to 7 would be certainly something that um, Georgia Southern would be happy with. But they want the, they want 28, so we'll see if they get it. Georgia Southern, 16 first downs in the half. Smiley rolling left. He's got a man wide open. Jefferson, touchdown. That's why I'm in the booth, and they're on the sideline. Great play callers. But they ran that play earlier, and they had the almost identical situation. He was able not to make the catch earlier, but he made the catch then, and... Touchdown. Under a minute to go in the second quarter, and the Eagles are starting to run away with this one. It is 27-7, pending the point. Western Carolina will have massive adjustments to make at halftime, and we'll see if, if they're able to do that. And Dudley just, getting ready. Just a couple big plays. Just a couple big plays. They missed the interception in the zone, then get it on fourth and inches. So instead of being a, what, a one touchdown game, it's a three touchdown game. And, and that score is 28-7, favoring Georgia Southern. Under a minute to go in the half. 
You're watching Southern Conference College Football on CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast. Seven is our score from Statesboro, Georgia. Georgia Southern with the advantage, and what an advantage it's been. And there's our own Brady Fossick. Hello, Brady, how are you, sir? We're getting ready for our halftime. Sam Baker, athletic director, and others we will hear from during the break. And Georgia Southern has a lot to celebrate right now. And there's Malone ready to return a kick. He would love to play a little hero and spoiler right now. See if the Catamounts can set up a return. Fans feeling good. The sun is out. The game is in their hands at the moment. The kick is a low screamer toward Malone. He gets it. Line drive right on the numbers. Comes through the first wave and down at the 30-yard line. I, I tell you, Mike, what one job I would never want is the job that number 19 has, and that is Tim Camp. It's called the wedge buster. You simply just go in there and throw the body for the calls of the team. Yep, and the gunners on the punt team are the same. I mean, just, just crash. You got to have a special attitude to be special teams. It's There's no doubt about it. No question about it. Because it's a train wreck. <laughs> it's a, a huge <laughs> train wreck. <laughs> so if I'm Western Carolina, I just try to run a draw or something and get out to half where I'm at. I, I'd be very surprised if they throw, and they throw a little quick screen. Going to Fudge. Yeah, gets so past his first man and tries to find his way right. Close to the sideline. Good, good, good safe play calling, you know, a, a, a screen or a draw, something in this situation. You get a big play out of it, you can hurry up. You still got a, a timeout left. Uh, so um, you'll see Coach Briggs be real conservative. But if he gets something positive that happened, you can see him hurry up to the ball and, and, and run, try and get some points out of it. Second and five for Clark and company. Fudge managed to, to nab the sideline stripe, and so that stopped the clock. Clark in shotgun. Rush coming in his face now. Clark is going to try and throw it away. Which Almost thing? found the uh, wrong side. I, I don't think that's what you want to see. I think if uh, this is a big down here because if you don't get it, Joyce Southern has a timeout left. I'd call a timeout, make him punt, get the ball back, and see what happened with Kraft, Kraft returning the ball. So those two plays there, a little surprised that we didn't get a draw in there so to keep the clock moving. Um, but, you know, Coach had other ideas in mind. Then. We saw Lewis Barr defending the pass, managed to tip that one away. So if he throw it here and it's incomplete, then Joyce Southern will get the ball with a timeout left. So let's see if he run a draw in here and try and get the clock moving and force Joyce Southern to use their timeout. Eagles cheating up on him. Clark, look in the middle of the field, throws it behind his man. He was trying to get it to Nick Miller, number 84, the sophomore out of Atlanta. No go. Clock stops, 33.7 seconds, and they're going to have to give it back to the right. Eagles. Real surprise with the play call in there. Um, certainly, Coach want to get some. You can understand the pressure of having to score, but I wouldn't want Joyce Southern to get the ball back. And the only thing they got going for them now is that Joyce Southern is a running team. So Teddy Kraft will stand at his own 20-yard line and wait for the punt and from Tim Macy. This is going to be short and far left of Kraft. It's going out at the 35-yard line. Well, now, Joyce Southern has a great opportunity to put more points on the board, and I, I think it's just but simply because of the play calling that Western Carolina decided to, um, to have there. They had an opportunity to get the clock moving or at least force Joyce Southern to use their timeout, and they didn't force that. So now Joyce Southern can use the whole field without concerns of the clock because they can just call timeout. So Smiley will come in at quarterback on this, and he's going to have trips stacked right. I think this has become your favorite formation here. Well, it's <laughs> it's it's a flashy one. You usually see it in those spread and high-flying offenses. It's Kraft, Jefferson, and Foster. Jefferson will actually go in motion out of it, back toward the middle. And time. too much time. Too much time. Sm Smiley didn't get it off. Well, cost them not not too big of a mistake. I mean, it'll cost them five yards, but uh, we'll see if they can uh, regroup and get a playoff here. You would like to see a team be able to come off the sideline and get into the play because the New Deals will get the ball back, and you'd like to see them be able to get into that play and run it. Well, this much is obvious. Georgia Southern's not just going to take a knee with their uh, 27 seconds. Great move by the Western Carolina defense. They brought in a nickel package. They're not going to run. Um, they're not going to, they're going to only have three defensive linemen. They brought an extra two defensive backs in the game. So, same set, 
Same motion, Jefferson crosses. Smiley looking to his right, now looking middle. Defense shuts that down, goes right and finds Foster who bobbles, no, incomplete. What a transition to go from quarterback throwing the ball to wide receiver to the ball coming at you. And you've seen him have a, maybe a little hand-eye coordinate adjustment. I think if he would have been playing receiver like he was last year, those are easy catches. But him coming from quarterback to receiver, it's a different uh, type of, of game he has to adjust to. And he hadn't been able to make it in two plays. Well, and he was going to be short of the marker and inbound, so the clock would have run. They wouldn't have had a lot to work with, probably or would have been forced to use that final timeout. So still 20 seconds left. Second and 15 from their own 30. See, I think Joyce Sutton can still get away with running some option here. Because, you know, this, when you look at what they're doing, they still can get away with running some option. Same set. Smiley looking down to his left. Overthrows Jefferson. Looked like Jefferson pulled up short, and Smiley thought he was going to keep going long. Yeah, because, I, I mean, if you put the ball in foster hands here at quarterback, you can get just a bigger result as you can with him at receiver because he, he, he knows how to make people miss. So, yeah, Georgia Southern, the goal would be just to find any of their skill players in space because if they get anybody in space, they could create a touchdown on any given play no matter how much time is left. Certainly, you're absolutely correct. But this is not an option set for them here, so I'd be surprised if we... But Smiley's going to keep and kind of rumble left, and that's going to set up a fourth down. They don't need to get off another play. Well, now Western Carolina is going to use their timeout. Uh, See, oh. when you throw the ball and you don't get the clock moving, it really changed the, the complexity of the game. I thought that's a good timeout. Make them use every second on the clock. So a little gamesmanship by Western Carolina saying, well, let's at least try to get a return on here. Or a block. Or a block. I'm a proponent of the block instead of the return. Well, sure, it just buys you 40 yards. You didn't have to go for it, didn't it? <laughs> I thought I could slip that one by you. <laughs> you on your P's and Q's today. I'm okay. doing all my right, best. Right. I'm doing Good my best. Job. Nine seconds left in the half. Just checking my partner here, just making sure he's on his P's and Q's. And uh, we got the, the line crew needs to get their, uh, their act together. We got a fourth down on one side of the field, which is right, and a third down on the other side of the field, which, which is not. <laughs> well, I take the third down if I'm Joyce <laughs> Sutherland. Yeah. I take the fourth down if I'm Western Carolina. 28-7 is the score as Mike Seawalk and, and his crew. And really the goal here is for the punter to just get it out, get it off his foot somewhere instead of behind him. Get the punt off. Uh, look like Western Carolina is going to set up a return. Uh, let's see if Joyce Southern punted out of bounds and not give him opportunity to return it. So with nine seconds to go. Snap is high, a little risky uh -huh. there. But the punt does get away and fielded cleanly. But nothing doing for Francis Brown. And the half comes to an end. All well that ends well. Well, I, I really think that um, Joey Southern did exactly what they wanted to do in the first half. Western Carolina is on their heels now. They got to do a better job defensively of um, stopping Joey Southern on first down. Western Carolina offense started off like there was going to be a blaze of fire and they fizzled really quickly because simply because the Georgia Southern defense started making plays and and we've seen this before where it looked like it was going to be a scoring fest but for some reason we keep looking up there and seven is still on the board absolutely we see Georgia Southern pulling away will the will the fates change in the second half stay with us Georgia Southern leading 28-7 you're watching Southern Conference football on CSS your source for Southeast sports Georgia Southern 28, Western Carolina 7 is our halftime score here from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. It was a trade of scores early and then all Georgia Southern after that. I'm Mark Bryant. With me is Tracy Hamm in the booth. And Tracy, what do the Catamounts have to do here starting with the third quarter? Well, the first thing I think they have to do is they have to get the ball because they get it coming off of the, after the half. They got to take the ball down and score. Not in a panic, not in a rush, run what they ran. Their first series where they took the ball and scored. Right. They, they, the scoring drive for Western was a 10-play, 80-yard drive, very efficient, and it looked to bode well for them at that time, and then nothing. It, it was the play caller. They had great play calling at the time. You saw they made when, – when they were blitzing, they – call the right play at the right time you can see there with us getting the ball and they just made the right call at the right time then the scoring started 
from Georgia Southern in, and then they didn't put them in a bind because I think they thought they had to score every time Georgia Southern scored. The Eagles completed four passes in the first half. Three of them were touchdowns, and two of those to Reggie McCutcheon. Well, Georgia Southern, if they throw at the right time, that's what they get. That's what the offense is designed to do. Throwing at the right time produces scores, and that, they did a good job of that the first half. And your halftime numbers, Georgia Southern 200 yards on the ground and four of four on fourth down conversions. In fact, Georgia Southern was three of eight on third downs. Five, they missed, so they missed it five times. Four of those, they got it on fourth down. It's 28-7. We'll be back right after this on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Get ready to start the third quarter of play on CSS. And a program reminder, four real guys talk real sports on Sports Night weekdays at 6 and 11, only on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Ready to kick the third quarter of play into action and Western Carolina needing to scramble something together really quickly or what? they're just going to have to watch the clock today. Well, the kickoff returns are so important. Field position is the name of the game, and they'll get it at the 20. Yes, they will. Dudley lays into that one. It goes over the end zone. And Malone, no chance to do anything with it there. And so Western Carolina will start on their own 20, first and 10, to begin the third quarter, trailing 28-7. Now, folks, remember, this game started out, the first three drives of the game were all scores Georgia Southern went down, got a touchdown. Western Carolina answered with, a impre with an impressive drive, and then Georgia Southern did it again, and then things started going off a little bit for Western Carolina. 9 of 14 now for Justin Clark, 118 yards and a touchdown. Let's see what they've got in their bag of tricks for the second half. Play action, and now looking for receiver. He didn't have one right away. He's going to throw it away, going behind Hines on the right side. Well, what I would like to see is Western Carolina Lewis, go back and establish the run. Go back and establish the run, then the play action will be more effective. To come out of halftime, have not established the line of scrimmage again to be able to establish the run, really nobody really bit on the fake then, so Joy Southern kind of understand that Western Carolina is trying to get back in the game, so they're not going to really bite on any run fake. So let's see if Western Carolina can settle down, get their running game going, then they can go from there, because there's no need to panic for them. Clark is going to hand the ball off this time. And immediate contact brings down Wishart. A.J. Bryan, who we talked about at the top of the show, just did a great job of filling. Um, he's, he's big enough to be an outside linebacker. Yeah, Bryant is 6'5", 190. That's what you call a long, tall drink of water right, right there. there. Long, and he's a good football player. He filled the gap then as if he knew what he was doing. And, and, and that's what you want out your free safety. You want him coming up, filling the gap. He's from Bushnell. That's, that's down toward my neck of woods. It's halfway between Tampa and Gainesville in Florida. Clark looking. Is anybody open? He's going to try and get it deep to his tight end and off the fingertips. Wow, that was a heck of a play by number 94. That's Sherman again. Sherman, Sherman was what is the, he doing that deep? He was the, the big, day. yeah, he was the big third down buster in the first yeah, half. He, he showed some athletic ability. They had a blitz on picking up, and he's running with the tight end. That goes up, get, distracts the, the pass from the tight end. Big fella getting it done. There's Jack Sherman. He ran really well then. That was good, to, impressive to see a big guy run as well as he ran then. Pressure on the punt. Kraft gets it at his own 36. The pursuit is right on him. He's only had one other punt return attempt today. He got one yard. This time, maybe he got three. Yeah, one thing they've done well today is they have covered the punt. Um, if, when they look at film, they can um, say that we covered the punt well, and, that, and that's a big part of the game. You know, special teams is really a big, big part of the game as well. So with a, just over a minute expired here in the third quarter, it's still 28-7 Georgia Southern. You're watching CSS, your source for... 13.58 to go in the third quarter of play. 28-7, the Georgia Southern Eagles on top of the Western Carolina Catamounts. I'm Mark Bryant, Tracy Hamm with me in the booth for CSS. Very proud to bring you this game from Paulson Stadium in Statesboro, Georgia. Two of three, two touchdowns. I'd say that's reasonably efficient. Ten rushes for 101 yards, so over 10 yards a carry for Foster. He's having an all-around day. Is he going to keep? He does. Ducks in through the first wave and gets out to midfield. 
One of the things that's been very impressive by Foster is that he is not going down with the first contact. He's been able to run through some some tacklers, some potential tacklers, I should say, because that guy has not been able to brought him, bring him down. Right there, you just saw a simple counter option where it still was a two-man option between the quarterback and the A-back here. Nobody else was involved but the backside A-back, and you can see there where three guys missed him before uh, number 44 was able to bring him down, uh, Lamar Barnes. Yeah, you see guys like number 38, Andre Brown, for the Catamounts just basically chasing Foster the whole time, never got a hand on him. Austin up the middle. Bang with contact. He's going to get five yards on the first down play. And when you want tough yards, you want a back just like Jermaine Austin, who's not afraid to lower the pads and run inside for the tough, tough yards. Man down for Western Carolina is number 53, John Martin, defensive tackle. 315-pound junior is slow to get up. But John's uniform is way too clean. It's a muddy field. You got to have some mud. If you're a D lineman, you don't look like a D lineman or O lineman to you, or a fullback like Austin, till you get some mud on your uniform. Get down and, and dirty. And there is John Martin from Cherokee, North Carolina. And you know, I got I got to say this. We've we've called out a lot of names on the Georgia Southern defense today. We've heard a lot from Jack Sherman and John Mooring and A.J. Bryant, but not so many names on the Western Carolina defense singled out today. Senior free safety Demathis Lennett leads the Bull Weevils of Arkansas Monticello against Harding in the Gulf South game of the week, Thursday at 8 on CSS. Lennett earned Gulf South Defensive Player of the Week honors, recording 14 tackles and two interceptions in the Bull Weevils matchup against Southern Arkansas last week. Gulf South football on CSS. Well, it's good to see John Martin up walking gingerly, but he is walking. That's a good sign. He's look, look like he can bear a little weight on his leg, so hopefully uh, he'll be able to come back. Second and five when we pick things up here. Mark, I, I really think Rico has to pick it up. I, I, I don't think we've called his name out nearly enough, but this type of offense, it really can make a defensive end ineffective. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we, we expect to hear more from Rico Reese and John Martin and Primus Glover, but uh, Georgia Southern has had all the momentum on their offensive side of the ball. And, and a lot of you that runs are in between the tackles where the defensive ends are lined outside the tackle. So it really just nullifies their two defensive ends. They put a lot of pressure on their inside linebackers. And when they've had an opportunity, they have not been able to make the plays. Third and two for the Georgia Southern Eagles. There's a look at Jermaine Austin, number six. Lined up behind Jason Foster, quarterback number four under center. Jefferson in motion, and the pitch back to Jefferson just in the nick of time. Jefferson had some room. He was tackled real close to the sideline, close to being out of bounds. Well, we finally got a pitch and got him outside. They've been running inside so much, and everything's been committed by the Western Carolina defense here inside, and Foster got a pitch out because they're not going to let him continue to run with the football. Um, so that could have been out of bounds. He, he, was, he was tackled beyond the beyond boundary there. The officials let that one go. That's a good no call. But I do think that Western Carolina is so consumed with the inside of tackles running because they've been very effective, but they got to find a way to get the ball out of Jason Foster's hand. Well, it, was a, be it was a good job by Foster, too, critical timing. I mean, he pitched that at the last instant because he was just about to get impact. And there's Rico Reese, again, someone we thought we'd hear more from today. Reese swarms to the ball with the rest of the Catamounts, but the pile pushes forward. One thing about option football, uh, the key – opponents on defense are linebackers, secondary, and the two and the three techniques, which are the defensive guards. Another man down for Western Carolina. I think that was number 44, Lamar Barnes. It is. Not a good sign for Western if they're starting to drop like flies here in the third quarter. And I think some of it has to do with fatigue. Um, you, the first half, it was really humid um, with the humidity up over 90 plus and so it's taking this toll on them. You've constantly been on the field. George Southern has done a good job controlling the football and so it's put them in a position where stamina becomes a factor. In the first half, Georgia Southern had the ball 17 and a half minutes. So they dominated the time of possession and it was it was a hard 17 and a half it football was a minutes hard, too. That's what I mean a hard 17. They went some too tight or well, two big elephants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Foster keeps and pitches to Maynard. And he's right at the sticks. 
right at the stick. That was true triple option there. You can see uh, where the fullback was taken by the uh, by the def defensive end, and the quarterback went outside and pitched the ball. And A-back probably had an opportunity to get outside there. He didn't, um, probably because he just ain't used to getting the pitch today. It is to be just shy, and they're bringing in some big fellas they're bringing again. bringing in my favorite group, the elephants. Yes, indeed. See what they come with this time. Last time they brought in the some extra linemen and a heavy package. They uh, they passed. Oh, Austin, did he lose it by trying to adjust? Let's see where the mark. All about official marking. That was the that was the third and short play. Third and short play. So they still could have another go at this, and they will because it's going to be fourth down. Well, if, 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 if I'm Joy Southern, I think about taking the points here. Um, Western Carolina, this is a big, big stoppage for them if they can stop Joy Southern on this play. I, I think you take points in these situations because it continues to put the pressure on the other team. Uh, but Joy Southern electing to go for it. The Eagles have had the Catamounts on their heels so long, and there's Foster, and he's going to push. He had a little surge, and I'm pretty sure that was enough. Looked like he got it by a full yard. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he where they spotted that. Defense is running back on the field, so... Look like it'll be a first down. Yeah, they're standing at the 20, so that would be good enough for the first down. As as much as Western Carolina can't get their breath on defense, do the Catamounts have, have, still have a chance in this game? Are they are they already behind the eight ball? Well, when you, you look at the reason why they're where they are, is because of the domination by Georgia Southern on the front offensive line. They just push them off the ball, and it was an easy first down. So you can understand why Coach Seawalk is going for it, uh, but a rule of thumb, you take the points. But he knows that they're dominating the line of scrimmage. Foster is going to keep it this time inside the 2015. They're not going to get him. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Yeah, Georgia Southern. I, I, they have to find a way to get the ball out of Foster's hands because he's been the best player on the field today. And you can see it was just the option, um, a counter option back to the backside. Old belly option, they call that one, where he fakes like he's giving it to the fullback. A back comes around, and he just made a great, great play. Foster has thrown for two touchdowns. He has run for two touchdowns. And it is 34-7. And Dudley looking to tack on the point. Kosiwa has to be really ecstatic about this because his quarterback is the best player on the field today. Normally it's been his fullback, but today it's his quarterback, and that shows growth from Foster. The point is good. It is 35-7 favoring Georgia Southern. Stay with us. You're watching Southern Conference football on CSS, your source for Southeast. We're going to look at this last play again. And Tracy Ham, you ran this Georgia Southern offense as good as anyone ever did. Tell me what kind of decisions have to go through the mind of Jason Foster. First, you look at his eyes. Once he get his head around, he immediately have to pick up the defensive end. If his defensive end goes out to the pitch back, you'll see here where the defensive end goes out to take out the pitch back. Now he's just looking for the alley. So he did a great job with his eyes. And then picking up the number two guy, you call him, who you pitch, pitch off of. And then once he picked up that, he was able to run the alley. Good job with the eyes and just as good with the legs. Once he was in stride, I don't think there was anybody who could get close. Speed is always king. I thought points were king. Yeah, after <laughs> speed. 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 It, it's okay. It's a king hierarchy. Yeah, it's a okay. hierarchy. Like king and queen. Like oh, okay. You're the king in the house, but you're really not in charge. But you call the king. <laughs> but the queen I'm, really is in charge. I'm, I'm not even going to go there. You <laughs> settle that yourself. Well, speed is king, points is queen. Okay. Now you determine which one's in charge. You work that out. 35-7 <laughs> is the score. And here comes Justin Clark. And there we are. There's the king right there, Tracy Ham. And I'm Mark <laughs> Ryan. Good to see you. Justin Clark, the quarterback, trying to lead Western Carolina into some semblance of consistency here that's that's been a problem for them spin move that doesn't work jc brown well i i think western Carolina has gotten way off their rhythm they lost their rhythm I, I would have liked to see them come out in the third quarter and get back into their rhythm they was not able to and so now they're playing from behind eight ball and they're doing the right move here is going no huddle and see if they can't get a quick score because you asked me earlier do they have a chance to come back unless they make several big plays there in jeopardy of getting blown out again Lewis Barr, number two, in on the tackle there. Again, he's the only North Carolina native on the Georgia Southern roster. Clark looks right, then throws left. A small gain there for 84, Nick Miller. And Judge Southern content with those 
kind of screens now. Western Carolina have to push the ball up the field. If they're going to be effective offensive, they're going to have to push the ball up the field and, and see if they can't get some of the some of the speedy receivers the ball and make some plays. Miller, six foot, 155 pound sophomore they listed at, so he's not likely to blow off a, a George, any of the Georgia Southern defense tacklers on with, with that weight. Clark readies his third and four play. Western Carolina needs this like nobody's business. Rush coming in from his right. It's complete and a first down. Good work there for the Catamounts. Eddie Cohen gets the first down as Rico Zachary sprinting in at Clark. And he did a good job in the face of the rush. Well, Judge Southern brought a blitz from the wide side of the field. They was able to get it, the ball um, to the receiver underneath, which is what you want to do when you get the blitz. Get the ball out the quarterback hands and let, allow your receivers to run with the ball. Still trying to hurry things up. Clark barking out the updates to his wideouts and sets in the shotgun. It's all a matter of urgency now for Western Carolina. It's 35-7's third quarter. It's going to be a handoff to Miller. They try a little razzle-dazzle, and it doesn't really amount to much, but a late flag comes in, and it looks like there was a little extra pushing and shoving maybe at the end of the play, and T.J. Rutledge could be a victim here. And this is what you don't want to see if you enjoy the Southern fans or the coaching staff. You want to see them holy composure. They got the game pretty much controlling the ball game. And if they would just keep their composure, then you'll see that they'll, it'll be a ball game they can and should win. And Rutledge is immediately pulled to the sideline. And it is a personal foul against the Eagles. You, you know, if you're trying to control a game, you've got a good lead, things are going your way, you can't just give out yardage at free 15 yeah. at a chunk there. Yeah, like you that. don't want to give Western Carolina any kind of momentum if you join Southern. And if you Western Carolina, you want anything to help you get your offense back in rhythm. So Western Carolina in Georgia Southern territory for one of the few times today. Clark now under center. Barr shows blitz. Throw will go to the right side. Good job there for the Reception and yards after catch by J.C. Brown. You can see J.C. Brown's very talented with the ball. Judge Southern doing a little zone blitzing, what they call zone blitzing, bringing the corner with help over the top. Uh, Western Carolina's working to the other side of the field, which allowed a one-on-one -on -one situation. Sharp play by number 11 there on your screen, J.C. Brown. And the Catamounts trying, trying to mount something here. And they need to be able to consistently put big plays together and to get themselves back in the ball game. And so another first and 10, the 32 yard line of Georgia Southern. Clark will hand the ball off and somehow Fudge gets through it all. He was hit once, twice and squirted out of it and got to the 25. And, and that's why you have to keep the run element in the game because you cannot continue to put your quarterback or your offensive line in a situation where they're having to throw. And you see Fudge handles the ball very well. He handled it well early, and they hadn't gone back to him until this time recently. They have really just kind of left him on the outside, eight carries for 27 yards, and certainly need to touch the ball more than that if you're going to control a Georgia Southern-style defense. And he's going to need to get his average up a little bit better than that. He's Averaging a little over three yards a carry. Clark in the shotgun, looking downfield. Good defensive play by Barr in right on top of Eddie Cohen. Great. Cohen wanted a flag. He's not going to get it. I thought he played great defense then. He sat in the cornerback, in the wide receiver hip pocket. He sat right in Cohen's hip pocket. When the ball came, he made a break on the ball with his offhand, which is what defensive backs are tall. You'll see they picked up the blitz well. And watch his right hand come right in there. He's right up. with it. He's, He's right with it. He's, it's tough to make a call on that play. Third down, four to go. The 25-yard line of Georgia Southern. Clark will get in under center. Looks left, now right. And it's underthrown. It bounced in. Well, he had the right call on, just didn't execute the play. And the Catamounts almost have to take points here. I know they're out um, four scores here, but they, I, I think you got to take points just to give your offense some kind of momentum. And, you know, I, I think even bigger than the offense get momentum is that defense is getting to rest. The defense is a, almost a shot group. They, they've tried up one field goal today, and they missed it in Western Carolina. That was still early enough to make a bit of a difference for them, and things have continued to get out of hand. 
They're going to go on fourth and four. They made their only fourth down attempt today. The rush in the face of Clark. He's not going to get away from number 13, A.J. Bryant. They say he's down. It's not a fumble. It doesn't matter because it's Georgia Southern ball either way. A.J. Bryant coming on the blitz, safety blitz. One of the few blitzes that's actually gotten there. A.J. Bryant did a and great Clark job. is down. Clark is hurt. He is still not up on the play, and that's that's worse news for Western Carolina than the score. Clark's backup, Michael McQueeny, mononucleosis, and out three weeks. Behind him, they have their choice of Josh Lee, a senior from Kannapolis, North Carolina, and the wide receiver, J.C. Brown, who played receiver in high school. Here's the play. Clark, he's looking for an open man. All he's got is Bryant. That's all. Bryant made a great job. Let's grab Cloth, stay with it. And not sure what he hurt there. Might have gotten hurt on the scramble for the fumble. It may have been trying to get back up at the end when the bodies were flying around. But there's no question that Clark is hurt on this play, still down right at midfield. From this angle here, it was hard to tell what he actually could have hurt. And so won't really speculate. Um, don't want any of the Catamount fans to hear me say something that is not. So we'll just wait and see. Um, Got movement, so that's good. That's always a good sound. Yeah, all the coaches and trainers huddled around. They get Clark back to a sitting position. But he's clearly uh, a little, at least got his bell rung on this. Yeah, it's good to see the young man get up. Now, Western Carolina, we talked about the contrast between how these teams have played this year. Western Carolina, again, they won their first two games. And then a low scoring loss. Of course, they had a, uh, a game that was called off due to, due to the hurricane uh, and the crisis thereafter. And th but then another low scoring loss. They haven't won a game since September 10th. Uh, I, th I think the game that the game that really might have hurt them was the Cincinnati game, a D Division one school where they held them. It was a 7 three ball game. And for them to. Um, and for them to be able to hold a D one school that's Foster runs with the ball. Foster's just been fabulous today. I don't know how he um, kept his feet on that one, but he does get to the 45. For them to hold Cincinnati to seven points and losing the game seven to three, I think it may have fooled them into thinking they were better than they were. And the reality of it, Cincinnati is not a very good team. Here's Foster on that last play. He turns around looking for uh, for Jefferson, who wasn't there. What well, offensive lineman, we always taught him never stand, always move forward. And Foster ran into them. He might have gotten a bigger play of that had his offensive line not been in the way. Maynard in motion, the handoff will go to Austin, up the gut for a first down. Those are your favorite group, the elephants on the field, that they just said that we're going to run it, then you can't stop it. And that is a bad, bad feeling. If you're a defensive coordinator, when you know what they're going to do and you can't stop it, and it's been like that all day, um, it just makes for a long, long day. First and 10, and there's Jason Foster, number four. Foster on the ground, 145 yards, which is a career high for him. How about that? And he's got a couple touchdowns on the ground. And don't forget, he, he's got a couple in the air as well, 45 yards passing and two touchdowns. He has been the best player on the field today by far. The pitch will go back to Maynard. And he gets across the 40, fighting for yardage. But there's no more to get right there. And Western getting a little desperate, trying to strip the ball at the end. Fans don't like it. Officials blowing the whistles trying to maintain control. And you can see what Coach Seawalk is trying to do now. He's trying to get the ball to the perimeter because I think he realized as the season progressed, as he get into playing the Appalachian States, the Furmans, that they're going to have to be able to run the ball outside. Western Carolina coming into this game had not allowed anybody to score in the third quarter. And just as they had not allowed anybody to score in the first, Georgia Southern has blown both of those numbers for well, Kent Briggs and his squad. It's certainly been a tough day for the defense of Western Carolina. Five and a half minutes left in the third. Foster's looking to throw. Left side, he's got Jefferson. It's complete at the 18-yard line. It's the philosophy of the offense, Mark. Anytime they throw, they believe a guy should be wide open because the secondary cannot play the run and the pass. And you can see the secondary of Western Carolina really want to make a play. On the last play, they came up really quickly. And so you can see here, he's wide open. And Foster really has, all he has to do is just put the ball anywhere close to Ooh. the guy. And, and that, that was a close. That was a great effort by Jefferson. It really was. To stay in bounds and get control of that ball. 
Foster still got it. The pitch to Jefferson, who's met immediately and dropped. Well, that's simply missed a the block then. Number 21 missed a the block on the perimeter, and that's what happens when they miss blocks on secondary. Number six, Mitchell Dukes out of Atlanta with the uh, tackle. They seem to keep finding these Georgia yeah, guys on yeah. Western Carolina. Mitchell uniform is still too clean, though. <laughs> you got a thing against the I got the a thing unions. about a clean uniform on a muddy field. There's the junior out of Atlanta. Look at Mitchell Dukes. It's good to see these kids get an opportunity to come back home. You sure his family and, and, and people that play with in high school are here to watch him play, so good for him. Foster fakes the pitch, keeps it himself, gets close to the 10. The thing about Foster is every time he touches the ball, you're waiting for what? Something really exciting or something big to happen. And he has, he's delivered more so not than not. He's been able to break tackles and make big plays. A good player gets better every game, and Foster's doing it. You're watching him right here. Almost a little fun little going on there. So he's done a good job, and the thing that's been very impressive today that they have not put the ball on the ground. If Georgia Southern don't fumble the ball or turn the ball over, they're hard to beat. No turnovers at all in this game. And there's your total yard picture, and it is one-sided. Georgia Southern on third and four trying to push in for a first down. Fans not liking how Western Carolina is, shall we say, finishing the tackles. Well, Western Carolina said, hey, we're not going to lie down. We're going to keep playing hard until after the whistle. Yeah. But it is good enough for a first down? No. Yes, it is. First, first and goal. One of the things that we've witnessed here, and the fans may not can see it on television all the time, but the offensive linemen keep running. They're keeping fresh offensive linemen in the game, and you don't see many defenders running into that game for Western Carolina. So it's a case of my guys are fresh, your guys are not. We're able to control the line of scrimmage. If we control the line of scrimmage, we'll win the ball game. Yeah, that's certainly a luxury for Coach Seawalk to keep having those bodies in there. Pitch back this time, nothing doing for number 21, Raja Andrews. Western Carolina defense is still playing hard. You always want to see that as a coach. You want to see your team continue to play hard because guess what? You got to line up next week and play another one. Earlier today, we said Georgia Southern, true for every game they've played this year. 40 or more, they won. 20 or less, they lost. And there was no middle ground. Right now, they're sitting on 35. One more touchdown gets them their winning number. And they're knocking on the door. Second and goal from the 10. Foster gives it to Austin. Plows forward to about the six, seven yard line. That was a little misdirection play there. They call that 22 or 23 opposite where the A-back goes around and the tendency is to always run to that side the A-back run, runs to. And so what they do is send the fullback out the back door. If the linebackers don't move, it's not a good play. If they move, it's a big play. And you can see Jermaine just barely missed getting through there. It's going to set up a third and goal from the seven in a 35-7 ball game favoring the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Foster gives to Austin, who bangs it down to about the two and a half. So in tight. Now, here comes that question again. They're, they could kick a, a, a chippy here and, and get that 38-7 lead, or they could go for it knowing that the worst case scenario is they make it a 99 yard to go situation for uh, Western Carolina. Well, they got a little time because um, Felipe Foster is down on the ground, number 94. Um, well, my philosophy is simply is this. You take points and you continue to put pressure on, on the team. But I, I because think- Because points are king, points are unless ki no, it's speed. Po points are queen. Oh, now. okay. Points we, are queen. Okay. And, and speed is king. All right, I'm just making speed. sure. I'm checking you. Okay, keep me in check. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I, I don't want people to, I don't want the fans to say I'm, I'm not agreeing with some of the decisions Coach Seawalk is making, but I'm simply saying he knows that his offensive line is really manhandling their defensive line. So he don't feel like, he does not feel like it's a big risk. Um, the philo general philosophy is that you take points and make the other team have to score to keep up with you because the risk is so great that you, it can be a momentum shift. But this game is, is such that it really the momentum, they'd have to do it three or four times for the momentum to shift. And there we see Foster getting up with assistance and getting off the field. Foster is uh, out of Athens, Georgia, the junior. Really favoring the knee, not uh, not looking too good there. And we can see, yeah, yeah, he's right. 
He's going right after the knee. So hopefully that's nothing serious. You never want to see the knee injuries. You never want to see the knee injury. That's a tough injury. But when you play against Georgia Southern, there, there are a lot of cut, chop, not chop blocking, but just cut blocking, they call it, where knees need to be protected. Foster, oh, motion on the left side, and that's going to derail the fourth down attempt. And it'll turn that fourth and three into a fourth and eight. First mistake my elephants have made all day. I thought elephants were supposed to have a good memory. <laughs> he didn't remember he the He didn't snap. remember the snap, snap count, count, yeah. So. Got to change his name back to Hogs. So they are going to kick. Dudley on for the field goal. Well, I think Joy Southern is doing a great job of, of just maintaining their composure. They had the one penalty there that cost them 15 yards, but for the most part, they've controlled the line of scrimmage. They've given Foster room to run with the football. And, you know, Jermaine Foster has not just stood out today, but what he's done as the field goal goes through for Joy Southern, what he's done really well is that he has made them conscious of the middle deep of the defense. And he's done a good job of getting the, the down and dirty yards. And you know I like a dirty uniform, and I guarantee his uniform is good and dirty. Well, it is now 38-7 with the field goal from Jonathan Dudley. A big lead for the Eagles. The Eagles have a great tradition here. So many wins and national championship flags flying. And you know, my, my broadcast partner here is actually part of that uh, that history, Tracy Ham. Retired jersey and championship rings and uh, I don't know, you know, tell me about tell me about your days at Georgia Southern. Well, we were just a, a group of young guys mixed together and we gelled together really well and we had a we had a we had a great coach in Coach Eric Russell and, and co what Coach Russell did was he um, he did a good job of um, he did a good job of making sure that we were a cohesive unit. And so what that did for us is that it allowed us to play the game. We learned how to play the game how it's supposed to be played. And Coach Russell was the mastermind of that. The people, the people here always have been very supportive. It's a community effort. The community has gotten behind the program, not just Bullock County, but the surrounding counties. And it just was a great run. We, you know, we had a great run at it. And uh, we kind of set a, a standard that we really put the pressure on the young kids to keep up. So we really um, try to come back. And like Foster, that's why I'm so happy to see Foster play the way he's playing because he is certainly in a, a quarterback run offense. It's a quarterback driven offense. And, he has a chance to establish himself as one of the better quarterbacks to come through as well. The kickoff is a touchback, so Western Carolina will resume at their own 20 with less than two minutes remaining in the third quarter. And uh, just want to remind all the folks who we're working with here, Tracy is uh, one of the Southern Conference greats and certainly one of the one of the uh, Georgia Southern legends, you know, they don't they don't put pictures and frame jerseys up of just anybody. I thought here. I stuck that by you since you was on the same oh, side, man. No. I tell you, I ain't been able to get anything by you today. <laughs> I tell you, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little slack. Let's see who come out at quarterback here since the last series. Um, Justin got hurt and looks like it's going to be Josh. Huh? Josh Lee, number 12, 6'2", 245 pounds, senior, and he will immediately toss to his right. For a short gain, Josh about two yards out. for Hines. That's coming out throwing the football. That's the only chance they have right now is to throw the football. So, um, and just to finish that thought we was talking about when I played here, we had uh, uh, some great team. I mean, we had a great team effort. I mean, it's a quarterback-driven offense, but from a teammate standpoint of view, everybody really got along, and it was a, a great unit with a lot of support and a lot of people involved. So I was just one of the wheels in the cog. Um, and people ex the expectations now are really high around here. Absolutely. A couple losses in a row really set some people on edge because you just don't do that in Statesboro. This is going to be a handoff to Fudge. Well, you don't do it and keep a job, that's for <laughs> sure. You know? And not that Mike's in jeopardy of losing his job. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just simply saying in Statesboro, you know, you got to win. With the flags with flying. With the flags flying. You know, you, I think what people want around here is an opportunity to win another championship. They know how hard it is, but getting into the playoff is king. You, well, that's another king, huh? Yeah. It's a lot of kings around here. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> I didn't tell you that. There's a lot of kings around here, kings and queens. Mm -hmm. But you got to get in the playoff as a standard. How about that? There you go. Talk about your clean jerseys. Lee fresh into the game. Fudge up the middle. He's got open room. He can't beat him, though. He's tired. 
Yeah, he got tired then. You see, he just broke through the middle, and they're running the football. It's a little oh, late maybe now. he got hurt, actually. He comes might, up limping. Might have pulled he, the hamstring. He got across midfield, and then everybody caught him. <laughs> and uh, could could be a little tweaked a little. Yeah, he's reaching for the hamstring. Yeah, looked like he'd come make a great cut right there. And you see Joy Sutton do have some of the backups in the game. Yeah, right, yeah. He, he try, maybe it's when he pulls up. Maybe when he sees the tackler. Cause That's always to get you an escape. Well, my hamstring. Well, he looked like he's genuinely hurt his hamstring, so we'll keep an eye on that. So Lee in the shotgun, fakes the handoff, now rolls to his right. The pursuit is on. He's running out of room, and he's out of bounds. Well, just know where to throw the football. Joyce Sutton is doing a good job. The young guys, you'd really like to see the young guys um, get some playing opportunity. Um, whether it's a blowout on your end or the other end, you still have to get them in there because one day that's the future of your team, and you like to see that. I know it's a tough time for Josh, but he needs playing time if they're going to be effective. There's the defense for the Eagles. And you know what? It, I, I, I got to say, I think if it was Foster or Austin running that ball up the middle, no one catches him. And right now, Fudge is, is uh, an example that Western Carolina right at the moment is, is getting beaten in, in every phase. Yeah, they're getting beat physically as well as mentally. But they had a great opportunity to make a great, a big play into a great play. Well, he only could keep it to be a, a great play because a big, he only could keep it to be a big play because a great play he'd have scored. Yeah. And so he only could keep it a big play as you see, um, they lose the middle edge here with the offsides. Of, you know, so Western Carolina got some things they got to work on. So the motion penalty moves Kent Briggs Team back a little bit more. Second down and a bunch. They're looking at maybe 18 yards here. And, and no coach like to lose, Mark, but this is one of the worst situations you can be in. You can see some of the history uh, yeah, of Western, Western Carolina. Carolina. I mean, we talk about Georgia Southern. Western Carolina has been there too, but with the one time to the runner up to Southern Illinois back in 83. So this is, you know, this is a school that's capable of putting something together too. Lee has got to keep it. The coverage is just too good. He was trying to get a screen off there, and he, he could not throw it because he had an illegal man downfield, so he was forced to eat the ball, and George Southern is really pursuing the ball well. And you can see those young guys really loving this opportunity to get in the ball game and get them some stats on the board. So now it's third down and forever at the end of the third quarter. We'll come back for the final period. It is 38 to 7 favoring the Georgia Southern Eagles over the Western Carolina Catamounts. You're watching Southern Conference football on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. Set to begin the fourth period, 38-7. It's all Eagles right now. Western Carolina with the ball. They're going to have to do something fast and furious to make any noise here in the fourth quarter. Lee, the rush is in his face. Pass complete on the right side to number nine, Eddie Cohen. Well, Judge Southern guessed right then. It was a guessing game early. Early, Western Carolina guessed right. Now, Judge Southern is just picking their choice when they want to do what because they took a cornerback blitz in and ran it right into the face of, of the quarterback. Well, it's going to set up a fourth and 16. And Western Carolina is pretty much now in a we're going for it anytime we got the ball because we don't have a choice mode out there on the field. And, and this is when you love to be a defensive player and you hate to be an offensive player. How about Lee, who doesn't get a whole lot of playing time and thrust into this kind of situation? Protection breaks down on the right side, but he gets the ball. Gets the ball to his man, but off the hands. That was a, we got and a collision. Down. There's two down on this one. They, Cohen and Zachary hit with a vengeance. Zachary's the first to get up, and Cohen Exactly. He's not just down. He's twitching. He is really feeling it right now. That is not a good sign. Wow, exactly he's in a lot of pain. Zachary is down as well. Zachary's getting off with help from his teammates, but what a smack. Must have been a head to head the way that they uh, went down. You can see Coach is really upset about the way the contact went out. Uh, We've got to be careful with both teams here, too. Um, anytime something like this happens, it becomes really emotional for both sides. Um, we got to get some, uh, some help out on the field. So just a little bit into the fourth quarter, and a fourth down play turns into a crash. And we're going to get another look at this and see what happens between Zachary and Cohen. 
hit him right in the back of the head, and that's borderline. That's really borderline because you see the guy's defenseless here. Oh, and, he, and, yeah. the, and then the head smashes into the ground. Right, yeah. They immediately bring out the stretcher and backboard. Yeah, and that's borderline, and that's what Coach um, Briggs is complaining about. That's really borderline because he took a couple steps. He has no chance of defending himself in that situation. Both teams know immediately how serious this is. We're going to step aside for just a moment. It is 38-7 Georgia Southern. We'll be back on CSS, your source for Southeast sports. 14 minutes, 12 seconds remaining of game time here today. 38-7, Georgia Southern leading Western Carolina. And a silent stadium erupts in applause for Eddie Cohen, who is now being carted off the field. It was as quiet as a football stadium can possibly be as they tended to Cohen on the field and the fans for both sides. Let their emotions be known as they applaud for Cohen. Martin, you can see everybody did their job. In those situations, people are on standby. You don't want to see them work, but they were in position. You can see them doing their job. And, and this is going to be the tough part. You know, how do these young men come back and, and get back into the floor of football? I want to remind you to catch more Southern Conference football action next on CSS, the seventh-ranked Furman Paladins. Hosts the, host the 16th ranked App State Mountaineers. Oh, that's a big one in SoCon play. CSS, stick around for that. Now, Tracy, uh, you, were, you alluded to how hard it is right now because these guys, everyone else in uniform right now has got to play 14 minutes of football. Certainly. What, how do you do that? I mean, what do you do after, after such a long break and such a serious moment? Right, it's called discipline. You know, how do you discipline yourself to train in all season? How do you discipline yourself to not retaliate? You know, how does Western Carolina football team go out and just play, you know, and, and, and hoping and knowing that that's part of the game, but it happened to one of them this time, so they keep their composure. It's called discipline. You know, um, certainly Coach Brig has his that his young men discipline as well as Mike Seawalk and his kids just go out and play hard, and you no know, understanding that as a risk. Second and nine, Smiley in at quarterback, hands to Austin, who'll just go right into the middle, gain of uh, two or three, and sets up a third down play. I am surprised to see Jermaine still in the game at this juncture of the game. He's such a big cog in the wheel for George Southern, and to see him still in the game um, is a bit surprising because, um, you know, it's late in the game, and he's ran for some tough, tough yards, and to still have him in there um, is somewhat of a question. Well, Austin comes up to uh, to the line with Smiley there. Smiley under center. And Smiley will roll and pitch. And the pitch was forward. It will be an incomplete pass. He's trying to get the ball out to number seven, Steve Steele. Yeah, some people think that's a fumble, but that's actually, you pitch it out in front of him for some time, that reason um, that it's an incomplete pass. You know, and to see Smiley in there, you know, it's, it, you know at, as you see him pitch the ball forward, I just know uh, the, the separation wasn't very good. The distance between the quarterback and the pitchback wasn't very good then, so you can see why that would happen. First chance to call Steele's number today. I'm sure he didn't want to start by diving for that ball out of bounds like that, but it's going to turn into a punt for Georgia Southern, only their second today. Kick is up and away. Fair catch called for and made at the 20 by Francis Brown. So it's safe to say the punter won't be tired today, huh? No, he, he's, uh, he should be in good shape. Let's see if he has a clean uniform. There's the Georgia Southern Eagle. The next Georgia Southern home game is October 22nd versus the Citadel. You know, I think I'll be at that one. What about you, Well, Tracy? we'd love to have you. Always <laughs> a pleasure to have you down in this neck of the woods. Because that game's going to be on CSS as well. Oh, you coming to work again? When are you just going to come and visit? Uh, you know. It's, it's not work. It's it's fun. What okay. can you say? 38-7. It's not fun for Kent Briggs and his group for a couple reasons. So, you know, they're, they're losing the game and losing badly right now, and now everyone's mind has to be divided and wondering about Eddie Cohen. Certainly, and, and Coach Briggs is a professional, and we'll see if he can't get his kids through and keep them playing hard. Lee pitches to Fudge, who will get three, maybe four yards on the play. 
Well, now that clock, you go, can we do like my kids doing Pee Wee, just move the clock forward. But the Southern Conference doesn't allow that, you know. <laughs> Uh, the mercy rule. This would be a good day for the mercy rule, not because they're not playing with, just because of what's on their mind. Yeah, I'm sure some of them wouldn't mind moving forward, like a, like watching a game replay. You know, we we continue with action later in the fourth quarter. Yeah, but this this is a, but for me, I, I still think this is very important time for Western Carolina. They've lost with three ball games in a row now, and they got they really have to find themselves. They at, in week three they were in the rhythm of the conference. They was right in the heat for the conference title. Early may have been, but they still were in the heat. Now they find themselves with two losses looking on from the outside in, but you never know what happens in this business. Shotgun snap to Lee, who was looking out to his wide receiver when the ball hits him. He was looking to Hines to adjust his wide out on the right side, and then the snap came. Oh, nothing, no breaks today for, uh, for the Catamounts. And these are the kind of mistakes that you would like to see the kids clean up so that when they go into next week, they don't spend time cleaning this up. They can go in and put the game plan in for the next week's opponent. So third down, 15 to go. Western Carolina now on their own 16-yard line. Do you have any third down and 15 calls in your pocket? You know, as a coach, you don't want to design too many of those because you never hope it actually <laughs> becomes necessary. I think you have to keep just one in your pocket, though. Okay. Lee, looking deep, finds a man at the marker, running back to the ball. It's going to depend on where they go with this. Oh, flags from everywhere. And that's the one thing you don't want to see is composure, you know. And that's what we were talking about with the injury. You know it has to be from the injury, and it's spilling over. You want to see the kids just keep their composure. Um, you're playing. you got to keep playing and let the game come to you and not try to do anything like that to hurt the ball club, because that certainly hurts your ball club. Miller got it close to a first down, and then... Did a little extra with the football, and well, that's 15, 15 up, 15 yeah, back. Nice. And it will go to, it'll stay. If it was a dead ball foul, it'll go to the next down. One more time. Good throw and catch here. Very good. But it's throw what happens catch. next. Yeah, that you can't do that. That Miller just flips the ball right in the face of the opponent. Yeah, and the coach actually had a third and 14 play in his pocket. And he could have went for it on fourth down, but for something like that to happen, you cost your team. You and he's, he's getting now. an earful now, and he should, because it was, was going to be a fourth and one. They probably would have gone for that. Kraft with the ball on the punt return, does a little dance, but gets nowhere. And they continue to cover well on the punt. So Georgia Southern will take offensive control with 11.05 left in the game and a comfortable 38-7 lead. And uh, just another notch in the belt for the Eagles. This is a winning program that keeps it going and going and going year after year. We talked a little bit about uh, some of the history before, but, you know, it says our house on that wall for a reason because Georgia Southern in Statesboro is well as close to a sure thing as you get in football it seems well we we've, we've established a, a heck of a tradition playing at home um we talk about wanting to protect our backyard when people come here we want them to understand that it's a tough place to to win at and it has been traditionally uh thus far and what we like to do is say when you come to our house um it's going to be tough for you to leave the way you came and we see the tracy ham jersey and the adrian peterson jersey He's got a couple championships too. Now, now, Adrian Peterson was a fabulous ball player that it's hard to describe him in words. If you didn't see him play, you missed a treat of an athlete playing the game of football in this style of offense. Smiley hands off to Austin, who's still out there. Well, I, I, I'm looking at the numbers here, and Jermaine has 22 for 95. We add those two yards on. They may have 23 for 96 or 7, so they may be trying to get him the 100 yard mark to continue the streak, but it's such a risky business to try to move streaks forward and you know you just want to get in and out the game healthy as you can see it's such a violent game that you don't want to press for the numbers you want to get the win and get out and get ready for next week so let's see if they go to austin again they do nope smiley pulled it back out and he'd got a good gainer to midfield option. i thought for sure they were going to go back to him again yeah the option always gets you because you never know where the ball's at and if you if we can't see it from up here if we can't see it right. from up here what do you think the defender's looking at down there great ball handling by smiley you know and i'm not a proponent of two quarterback systems 
the way they've used them today. But you can see, I'm okay with it as long as one of them's a senior and one of them's a junior. The, the, the difference are one of them's a sophomore and one of them's a foster's a sophomore and Smiley's a junior. So you can see where to work because you have a veteran and a young guy. Uh, and then they won't they won't leave at the same time where right. last year the two left at the same time so um, you can see where it works with these two young men so they're running out of play clock and smiley's got to call a timeout they spent so much time trying to get the play in and then they ran up to the line too little too late and they got to spend a timeout here leading third by 31. I think Smiley may be banged up on that play. You can see him grimacing on his face. I think he may have gotten banged up. Um, one of the common injuries you get as quarterback in this option, are you get hit in the hips a lot. You know, right. you, you take a lot of contact. So that's one of the things that you have to always be. Uh, you have to always be. Um, yeah, look at this. Thing. Now, now that's a beautiful sight to watch those flags. You know, I think my two of the 85. Well, I know that 85 and 86. The two on the top. So. The top was symbolized. That's where we started at it. And those are the those are the six national championships. Yeah. 38 and nine playoff record overall. And you can see the vast majority of those right here at Paulson Stadium and an overwhelming record of 29 and three. Georgia Southern, again, has known what to do and how to do it year in and year out. But one thing I noticed about that flagpole, Mark, there's room for more. Yes, there. It's a tall pole. It's a tall pole. <laughs> plenty of room for more, and so. They certainly look impressed. What I've been impressed about with the Georgia Southern team this year, the 2005 one, is they faced adversity and stared it right in the face, and they've come back from a situation where people had written them off. There was a lot of grumbling when UT came to town about, oh, I don't know about this kid, I don't know about this. As you see, Smiley walking off holding his back. I think he took a pretty good shot in his back, but they've held the composure. Coach Seawalk's done a really good job of keeping his team comp composed and still giving them opportunity. So Foster is going to step back in under center. He's got Austin behind him. Austin will get the ball, and he's going to have his 100 yards and maybe a little more inside the 40, 35 out of bounds at the 31-yard line. And now there's a little push and shoving on the sideline. You talked about keeping composure and discipline. I think some of it's unraveling in places. Yeah, some of it's unraveling. You can understand. I understand the Western Carolina side because Georgia Southern is trying to get numbers, and you see Austin make a great bounce. I mean, this is a great bounce outside, and he has the speed to do that. But you can see them a little being a little frustrated with him still being in the ball game. Not that that's in their control, but you would want to see him out of the ball game because you know that. Um, He's trying to get the numbers. There's his 117 yards, and he's going to take a little breather. And new quarterback in the game, number five, Melvin Greer. So I think they accomplished what they, like you said, what they set out to do there. Got the 100-yard the mark and did a little personnel switch. Certainly, now you're good to see. We had to go to the to the roster to find Melvin on there. <laughs> Melvin's a redshirt freshman. Well, good for Melvin, and this is how quarterbacks traditionally have been developed at Georgia Southern. He's getting a chance to get in there and play now, make his mistakes when it, they don't really matter. Where Foster was not able to do that last year, and he made some of his mistakes early, mm -hmm. so they got beat. And so everybody was grumbling about Foster, but hey, Foster is the right guy for this offense. Him and Smiley are the right quarterbacks for this offense. Under five seconds on the play clock again, but this time they do get it off. And quick handoff inside, nets about a half a yard, if anything, and it'll be third down. And some more in the face going on in the middle of that. Yeah, how about all the quarterbacks look alike almost? When we had to go to the, he almost looked like Foster. Yeah, interchangeable. interchangeable. That's, that's the value of the of this yeah. scheme. And they all look similar. You look at you look at Melvin Greer here. He's a Georgia native, and you can see where he almost looked something like Foster. And Smile is the only different look when he's a little stouter than both of them. So it's it's not the uh, the classic pocket passer, six foot four looking guy. They're all five nine or shorter and very fast and very skilled. I think I might have broke the mold. I wasn't. I was a little taller. and I might have been a little slower. Uh huh. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> It'll bring fourth down. Well, let's see if he go for it. Well, get your kicker some work or go for it. I think now he's gotten to the point, Coach Seawalk has gotten to the point where he understands the game is, but he probably understood it long before I said he understands it, but that the game is in hand and, you know, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, put your defense back on the field. So Greer will take the team up to the line. 
Georgia Southern's nailed every fourth down try today. Let's see if they've got a fourth and nine in hand. And it looks like Greer's going to throw, but he's swarmed, gets away from it, still going, and he's going to get the first down. Look familiar? Yeah, it does. It really, really does. Amazing. It, it really calls for the defense to be so disciplined, not only to the front side of the play, but to the back side. They did everything right to the front side. You can see big number 55 stops. That's Quincy Marshall is still wondering why he doesn't have a sack on this play. Still wondering why he doesn't have a sack. And it's because the backside was not disciplined. And so that'll set up a first down at the 15. Greer wants a little piece of the glory here today. He hands the ball off inside. It's number 39, Lance Turner. More new names getting called out here. Lance Turner, a junior out of Alpharetta. I love it when you have to look at the roster. Yeah. <laughs> you get used to everybody and suddenly, hey, wait, who's that? And there he is, number 39, Lance Turner. This is what make practice practice because you practice, you're not knowing whether you're going to play or not. You're giving a look for the other team, and all of a sudden you're blowing the team out and you get to play. And this is what keeps these kids coming back week in and week out when they're knowing that it's not their turn yet. Sounded like you're almost breaking into your Allen Iverson impression there, that yeah. practice. <laughs> practice. <laughs> no, I didn't say <laughs> Allen Iverson didn't like the practice. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, pitch out gets him nowhere on this one. That's uh, number 21, Andrews, Rajai Andrews. Greer got contact in the middle. He got it out just at the last second, but Andrews said, No thanks, no man. Thank there, there's, <laughs> I got friends over here. <laughs> Sometimes you wish the quarterback would keep the ball. He probably would like to see um, Coach Briggs take some of his starters out. He still have a few of his starters still in the ball game, and you know, there's a couple the dirty uniforms out a there. Dirty uniforms That's what you out need. There. Now I don't mind clean uniforms because I know you're just coming back and in, coming into the game, you're getting the opportunity to play. So clean uniform, it's acceptable now. Greer hands the ball off, and the pile moves forward to the five and close to a first down. I think that might have been, and more shoving. I think it was Chris Covington on the carry. It was. I, I really believe Coach Briggs, should, Coach Briggs should get his uh, some of his starters out of the game because Georgia Southern, they, they offensive linemen are like their quarterbacks. It's hard to tell the difference, and they have the same push, the same um, framework as all the quarterback all linemen they have. And so to see him push the line of scrimmage is no surprise to us up here because that's what they've done all day. Well, they're going to measure, and we'll step aside. 38-7 is the score. Five minutes remaining in this game. You're watching CSS, your source. Mazda is your low-priced Mazda connection. And the home of fairway value pricing. This is your guarantee that nobody from Charleston to Jacksonville can sell you. In the game, Georgia Southern leading 38-7. Nothing on uh, first down. As the Eagles got up to the line quickly. They'll go to second and goal here from just inside the five. And it is Melvin Greer, redshirt freshman, leading the offense and trying to get him in the end zone. His pitch to Steele, who's going to find the corner. Touchdown. Steve Steele, senior out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And you can tell his teammates are pumped up for number seven getting in the end zone. Well, good for, good for Steele. He did a great job of taking the contact and forcing his way in the end zone, and that make amends for that pitch he had to get that he had to die for when he just got in the ball game. That make amends for that. You, you can see the kids are really ecstatic for Steele. As you see the replay here, and he catches the pitch, and he just he just wheeled his way into the end zone. That was Nailed him right into the pylon there. Touchdown, Steve Steele, and the senior feeling the love from his teammates. Nothing like feeling the love as a senior from your teammates. He's getting lifted up on the shoulders. 45-7 the score. One more time. Steve Steele. Georgia Southern out in front on CSS. It's a battle of great basketball. Four minutes and one second left in the football game. 45-7 Georgia Southern. It fits their profile. They win when they score 40 or more, and they're going to kick off one more time. There's number 42, Malone. That's tough to live up to, Mark. It's going 40, you win. Yep, yep. 45-7 is the score. And Western Carolina, desperate to see anything that's good news at this point. A fair catch actually called for at the 24-yard line. Report in on Eddie Cohen, the injured Catamounts wide receiver. He does have feeling in his extremities. He will be kept 
overnight for observation here in Statesboro, East Georgia Medical Center. And uh, so good news there that, that uh, there's some progress and some, some positive stories coming out of uh, out of Eddie Cohen because things did not look good for him yeah. when he left the field. We're just ecstatic to hear that. That's good news. Um, he's from Hilton Head, South Carolina, so that's right down the road. So he'll have people that will be there that's very close to him. Lee, still the quarterback. He's just going to hand it up the middle to Nicholas Wishart. The fans are singing and celebrating the victory at this point. By the way, just wanted to confirm uh, what everyone probably has guessed at this point, that Steve Steele, who scored that touchdown, the senior first career touchdown, and uh, that's why he was lifted up on the shoulders of his teammates, because I'm sure they all wanted that for him. He'll remember that a lifetime. He should put the ball and encase it in his trophy case as my first career touchdown at Georgia Southern. Another handoff. This time it is Malone's trying to find the right side, and he gets a smackdown. They're still playing physical football. You know, these are the young guys who've been on the sideline hall. They're just chopping at the bits for the opportunity to get in there and get into some contact, and here we are, and they're still playing hard as, as Ken Milton comes up with the big hit then. Third and two, three minutes remaining. It's the second broadcast you've done down here, and we've made you earn your money both times. <laughs> okay, I like to see that. High formation, and Lee with a with jumping in the face and a sack. Goodness, what a, he had nowhere to go. He looks up and he sees airborne Sean Williams. And then in the end, it's finished off by Diedrich Bynum. Lee's like, is that clock moving too slow? Is and that? you say you want to be a quarterback. <laughs> I didn't say that. Oh, you didn't say that? No, you, I did not I, say I, that. I, I knew I wrote that down you off you air that you wanted you, to be a quarterback. No, you misheard, oh, my okay. friend. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, partner. <laughs> I've seen this game. I, I don't need that. The option don't look so bad now when you look at what he just saw in his face. This guy got jumping in his face to rush barreling down on him. Punt is away from Macy. Returning it is Rajah Andrews. He'll get out to the 40-yard line. And about two minutes left in this ball game now. What I like to see is both teams just get out of this ball game, get rid of some of the, um, it's really chippy out there now. If you watch, both teams are really doing a lot of talking. Um, and you like to see just get the game over and get them out of here. Enjoy Southern go their way, Western Carolina go their way. And we'll see it. They'll see each other next year up, um, at their home turf. And CSS is back here in two weeks. Tracy and I will be here for the next Georgia Southern home game, October 22nd against the Citadel. Now, Citadel has upset Georgia Southern at times when Georgia Southern has something big riding on it. So I know Georgia Southern will be very geared up for this one. Yeah, there's a history between those two schools. And be an interesting game to watch. And it's homecoming. <laughs> and my family will be here with me this that weekend. Very so, nice. And my kids love it. They hate missing their ball game, but they'll for homecoming, they'll come with daddy and mommy. Second down. Minute and a half left. Greer still the quarterback. And it's a little slow motion football out there right now. And some extra again. They can't help themselves anymore, can they? <laughs> well, I think they just really disappointed in the way they played today. They feel like they had a better ball club coming in here. And to see it get away from them. And seven is still on the board. You know, when they started out, it looked like it was just going to be a heck of a ball game back and forth. And they have not been able to remove past. It, it's really seven. played out. It's really played out like the game we had here on CSS. Just you know, just a little bit ago, the Chattanooga game where each team came out fast and it looked like it was going to be a race. And then in the end, it was 48 to 10. Today played out very much the same way. Western Carolina scored their first possession. Greer upended for a loss. Yeah, I think one thing that happened to West Carolina, the loss last week to Citadel really put them really because I don't think they could conceive that Citadel would beat them after that beating the top team in the conference firmly. And they were somewhat on a roll. They lost some out of conference game. But to lose that conference game really put them, uh, I think, in a, just a bad state of mind because they felt like they had a good enough ball club to challenge for the conference title this year. And uh, they held the play clock until it got below 25. So that will effectively do it. No more plays necessary. 
the Georgia Southern Eagles, to the elation of their fans, have won it and won it in big fashion. 45-7, Kent Briggs going to have some work to do with his club. They, their upcoming slate, they've got, uh, they've got a week off so they can recover a little bit mentally, emotionally, physically. We're going to step aside for just a moment as we see Kent Briggs and Mike Seawalk changing a few thoughts, possibly about Eddie Cohen. 45-7 is the final score. Georgia Southern over Western Carolina will step aside. You're watching CSS, your source for Southeast Sports. Georgia Southern Eagles over the Western Carolina Catamounts. Georgia Southern goes to three and one in the conference, four and two overall, and they're about where they want to be. And uh, you see the teams join together for a prayer at midfield as much for uh, each other as it is for Eddie Cohen, who went down with a serious injury during the game, but we hear is doing better. Tracy, can you sum up this game for us? What did we see out here today that, that each team can take away from this? Well, you saw one ball club that has had high expectation year in and year out, have not been able to deliver at the moment of truth, and that was Western Carolina. They had everything in the game here, coming in here, playing good football, and now allowing this to slip away from them. Just not playing very, very, it wasn't very effective on offense. The quarterback was effective, but he wasn't, he didn't make any big plays. Right. And so Georgia Southern, you see once again, they were in a big ball game in order to keep themselves in the hunt, and they were able to deliver. And that's the difference between that program and Georgia Southern program. The Western Carolina was not able to deliver what Georgia Southern was. And uh, if you like this Southern Conference football, you ain't seen nothing yet. There's more coming up because App State and Furman are going to go head to head right here on CSS. And that's always a good one. So there's something to look forward to. Keep it right where you are. And you know what? We're going to be back here at Paulson Stadium in just a couple weeks for the next Georgia Southern home game when the Citadel comes a calling. Looking forward to that one. Again, final 45-7 favoring Georgia Southern. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate it. Keep it here on CSS. You're watching CSS, your source for sports in the Southeast.